Hello everyone, welcome out to Car Shield Field for today's YBM cast presentation of the GAC North Classic. Uh, today uh, we've starting out with the Winfield Warriors facing off against the St. Charles Pirates. Then at the 430 mark, hopefully the weather will hold out for us. Um, we will have, I know who it is. It's St. Charles West facing off against Orchard Farm. And then the nightcap at 7 p.m. will be the Warrington Warriors taking on the North Point Grizzlies. That will be our day today. And today we start off uh, with these Pirates team that, and this Winfield team that have kind of struggled um, through this season. Uh, both teams dealing with some injuries. Um, some some uh, St. Charles Pirates got off to a pretty good start. But injuries have kind of derailed them a little bit. Winfield had uh, expected a little quicker start, but they're finally starting to play some pretty good ball. Lost a lot of close ball games. And uh, we had a chance to talk with both coaches, and we're going to start off with uh, Coach Stokes here from the Winfield Warriors as he talked about his ball club and where they're at. Drew, go ahead and roll. Folks, we have head coach of the Winfield Warriors, Jamie Stokes. Coach, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, love coming out here to this ballpark and playing, right? Yes, a lot sir. of fun. Yes, sir. Um, so since we last uh, saw you guys, uh, you're still hovering around that 500 mark. I mean, you have, you know, just come up on the south end of a couple of real close ball the games. Sonsonate. Yeah, we've uh, we've battled in most of the games that we played. I think we've got. I think we've tallied up to now five games that we've won by or lost by one run um, and tough games too, like not. And then, you know, we've had a couple where we probably should have been closer and didn't do quite as well. But um, the last couple of weeks, we've kind of had a little shift in mentality. So I'm excited to see how things work out today. Oh, that's good. I love to hear that. So it's been a tough season, probably not what some of the kids expected. You got that there. You got Brady Creech going on the mound today. You always know what you're getting from this young man. And uh, what are you expecting to see there? Oh, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna go up and do what he does. He's gonna he expects to be great, and he's gonna do everything within his power to do that. Um, you know, we're kind of kind of bitten by the injury bug, so yeah. we're you know we got some guys that might uh, not necessarily play out of position, but might not be as comfortable in the spots that they might get to play today. So we're gonna we kind of laying on him pretty heavy to be the man on the mound for us, and and uh, then kind of lead us in offense as well in that aspect <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> hey don't man right. <laughs> do it all uh your your offense has been kind of up and down some of the guys that had bigger years last year tr still trying to find it this year right yeah we've uh we've actually kind of came on strong as of late uh -huh. um we we did we struggled we struggled to find the ball with the bat there for the first couple weeks but uh you know, slowly but surely, we're kind of easing into it, and we've had a, a couple guys kind of shock us a little bit. Things that we didn't we didn't necessarily expect big things out of that have come in big and clutch situations. So, I think once we start clicking, we're gonna be okay. It really matters in district time, right? Right. right. <laughs> yeah. And and honestly, if you find it by then, the regular season record, just all for none. There you go. Doesn't, I love that, matter. right? Just get ready. Yep. And, you know, getting hot sometimes at the right time, that's that's what it's about, right? Yep. Just trying to, like I said, at this point, we're just trying to keep people healthy. That way, when May comes around, we are as strong as we can be. There you go. There you go. Well, we're looking forward to the ball game today, sir. Uh, good luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Folks, head coach Jamie Stokes from Winfield. We'll see you out at the, at the, on, on the field, sir, at right. least at third base. Oh, I'll be there. <laughs> Appreciate uh, Coach Stotes taking the time to talk with us. We also got a chance to talk with Coach Bickle from the Pirates. Um, similar scenario here. We we had a great talk with him in our preview. So let's catch up with Coach Bickle. Folks, we're here with uh, head coach of the St. Charles Pirates, uh, Brad Bickle. Brad, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Um, ready to play some ball. So we got a nice yeah. day for it right now. Hopefully, we get. <laughs> hopefully, weather stays away. For all, all the games tonight. Uh, I know. I, I understand. Whole, it's that one pocket, yeah. you know. So, how's the season so far, man? Well, right now we're 5-11. and 11. Um, 
we've given away a couple games I think we should have won. I agree. Um, we're dealing with some injuries, so we've lost a couple guys uh, for the season. Uh, hopefully a couple guys are getting healthy again. Uh, I know Jacob Myers is, will, will be on the bump for us today. He hasn't pitched a whole lot this year. Right. Uh, came in as our number one. Dealt with some, some stuff with some shoulder, and, and he's starting to work back into um, his full workload. Not quite there yet, so we're going to manage pitch counts today with him. Um, and keep building him up, but it's good to get him back healthy. Um, and then we got a couple guys uh, who can only DH right now, so um, <laughs> that kind of hurts when you're setting the lineup. And those guys were supposed to be top of the lineup type guys, and you can only play one of them in the DH role. So, but we've had some young guys step up, and you know, good experience for some freshmen that are playing varsity baseball now, and um, they've done a good job for us, and, and some of our other guys stepping in and, and taking on bigger roles than initially planned. So. Well, you kind of answered the question for uh, Jacob Myers, and it's tough when you have those injuries. I thought, you know, you kind of got out of the gates pretty good. I thought you guys, you're very competitive, playing teams tough. Yeah. You know, injuries just, it's tough to overcome that, especially sometimes when you don't have the roster size, right? Yeah, yeah. we carry about 15 on the varsity roster right now. Um, we got three guys out for um, – FBLA field trip today, two of our oh. starters. Uh, so they get back around like 4.15, 4.30 tonight, I think. So I don't think they'll make it the game. Um, but that's okay. It's The you know, guys that are playing live today have all been playing all season, have filled in for injuries. So, um, yeah, we're not a team that has, you know, pitcher onlys, you know, POs. We, you know, if you play field, you also pitch. Thank so you. So we, we manage arms as best we can. And um, sometimes we have to put guys in positions where they don't have to throw as much after the day of pitching. But uh, just to – ease off their arm a little bit so yeah it's been it's been a stressful uh year so far dealing with injuries but um again it's giving guys opportunities to step in and take on larger roles will just help them in the future so. you guys have had you got some guys hitting well um looking just over the stats producing but then you got some guys that aren't quite there and as you said you know some of that is just younger guys having yeah. to step in hey listen when you got that freshman or even a sophomore sometimes coming in against good solid varsity pitching yeah. it's a, it's a difference isn't it it's a big transition from jb baseball to varsity baseball yeah you're not seeing the pitching at the jb level that you see at the varsity level um you know if you're if you're a stud and you're a freshman sophomore, you're all back of RC, especially in JC North. Right. Um, yeah, so we've seen some tough pitching. Um, some guys are learning to adjust a little bit, adjust their swings. Um, got cut back on some strikeouts, put the ball and play more. Uh, yeah. But that just comes with more experience. And you got Brady Creech today. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> It doesn't um, get easy. No, right? it does not. Uh, he's a tough pitcher. I know. Uh, he's a competitor, man. He's, um, you know, he. I know he. He's a good player. He's, it feels like he's been there for six years now. Um, so I You'll will be, be glad to see him go. I, huh? I will be. Yeah. Um, I, I respect. I respect the kid because he, yeah, he, play, no, he plays hard. Exactly. Plays the right way. Um, every time we play them, he's he's always respectful, and uh, I I like the way he competes. So it's gonna be a good challenge for us. Yeah. Um, and we'll see if we can make him work and put the ball in play and um, hopefully create some havoc on the bases and do things like that. So we'll see. There you go, folks. Head coach Brad Bickle. Thanks for taking the time, yeah. Coach. Good luck today. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. We appreciate Coach Bickle taking the time to talk with us. Uh, let's get to the starting lineups as we see the umpires uh, taking uh, the ground rules here. We've got uh, for the visiting Winfield Warriors, leading off number 28, playing right field, Colin Morse. In the two-hole, number 27, and today's pitcher, Brady Creech. In the three hole, number one playing third base, Caden Palmer. In the four hole, number 24, DH, Aiden Corhammer. And Grant Seidel will be playing in left field, number 14. In the five hole, number seven playing shortstop, Alex Kinney. In the six hole, number four, Luke Pruitt. He will be uh, behind the plate. And in the seven hole, oh, the wind blew it, sorry. Uh, number six, Caden Palmer playing second base. And in the eight hole, number 18 playing uh, first base, Brennan Howard in the nine hole. Number two playing center field, Cooper Martin. And for the home team, St. Charles Pirates leading off, number 18 in center field, Caleb McCollum. McCullen. In the two hole, 
Number 11, playing second base, Mason Hickerson. In the three hole, number seven, behind the plate. Oh, I'm going to bless. The, the gentleman's grandfather just said this. Nick Basenzen is. I, I probably butchered it, I know. And he just come and told me. <laughs> uh, number four hole, number two, play, and we'll be on the mound, Jacob Myers. In the five hole, number 15, playing third base, Nate Mosley. In the six hole, number five, playing left field, Hayden Schneider. In the seven hole, number eight, the DH, Curtis Harris. And at first base, number 12, Aaron Keen. And in the eight hole, number 27, playing right field, Matthew Robertson. And finishing it out in the nine hole, playing shortstop. Oh, forgot his number. Lauren, can you help me out? Number four. I, I didn't put his number down. Colton Hadler. So there's the starting lineups for today's uh, teams. Brady Creech will be the pitcher for these Winfield Warriors. And Brady Creech on the year is one and one. Um, his... ERA, we're not quite sure. Some of the, the, the stats were a little undefined here for him in that respect. But uh, Jacob Meyer has been dealing with some injury. And as Coach Bickle said, and uh, but on the year, Jacob Myers is 0-2 with an 11.67 ERA. I think he's hoping to get back on track here a little bit. But that's only in three innings. And like I said, he's worked back from some shoulders in, shoulder injuries, like uh, Coach Biggle said. And uh, so we're getting ready to start off with the playing of the National Anthem. So we'll step aside, and we'll be right back. Thank you. 
All right. So now that all the uh, festivities are concluded, I want to welcome in my broadcast partner, Mitch Thomas, from the Hitting Zone, joining us on the call today, as as per usual for the GAC and pretty much everywhere else. Mitch, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, sir. It's kind of uh, awkward being on the left of you. <laughs> I know, right? We, I, I, we mixed it up a little. I appreciate you working my muscles now to look into my right, since I'm not supposed to do that. But uh, oh, now he's the left side of my. That's a little guilt right there. That's yeah. what is called a guilt trip, folks. No, no, no. That's good. I'm, I got to work good. out the left side of my neck now yeah, to make the right side, because I always turn right and look at you when you tell me not to. So we're looking forward here. Uh, Jacob Meyer coming back, uh, working back from some shoulder issues. Mitch, be interesting to see what he's got on the mound today. Uh, across the way, Brady Creech. Pretty good, I think a pretty good pitching matchup. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. Uh, we've we've seen uh, Winfield once already this year. It's the first time for us seeing uh, the Pirates. And so um, not a lot of games played between the two. Uh, so it's hard to get a kind of a gauge of where uh, the two teams are at. But um, it's a nice start. Two o'clock, start off this GAC Classic. Absolutely. We've... Uh, you know, we've seen it. Winfield has, you know, they've lost some close ball games. Um, struggle back and forth. And I was talking with Coach Stokes earlier. They're, he said they're starting to get it, starting to swing the bat a little better. And uh, Colin Morse leading off here. They just need to get it hot at the right time, don't they, Mitch? That's all that matters. And it's that's that conference um or, or, you know, the, the conference uh, a tournament, or I guess it would district be district tournament, tournament yep. not conference tournament. That's all right. Yeah. It's, we, we knew what you were I'm thinking about. college. Yeah, yeah. And even some of them don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you get hot at the district tournament, and they still have those two big arms between Creech and Morse, and they've got some big bats in this lineup. They do, and this young man at the dish is hitting 357 on the year. Uh, is obviously the table setter for them. Um, you know, I'm not sure if the stats are up to date because he's only got 18 plate appearances on the season. Uh, the Winfield stats look a little bit, you know, I don't know if Coach has got them all up to date there. Doesn't seem like it. So we're we're kind of we're kind of iffy a little bit on that. We'll wing it. <laughs> yeah, we'll wing it. Two and zero here quickly to Morse. Strike on the outside corner. We're going to have to go with the eye test today. Got Billy Buchanan down the line, and I'm and it's terrible because I, I know Rick's last name, and I'm too old. It's it's leaving my head. Behind the play, and a ringing single to lead off this game right up back up the middle for Morse, and uh, the Warriors jump out here real quick offensively. And Morse is that table setter. I mean, he's going to go out there and give you good at bats, work walks, not going to strike out a lot, so... Uh, obviously, puts the ball in play for you. Here's the pitcher, Brady Creech up. On deck, you got Caden Palmer. And then, this is a great baseball name. Aiden Corehammer. <laughs> Gotta love it. Right? It's outside. I'm, I'm hoping they give him, like, the Thorhammer nickname, you know, something like that. It's got to be, right? Yeah, I have to. Everybody, you know. Just the name. Even Brady Creech. It's like it's a base. It feels like it's a baseball name. Absolutely. And a ground ball back to Myers, the pitcher, out at two. And they can't turn the double play. It gets away from the first. Here we go. Oh, and we got to play at second. But he's going to beat it. Creech hustling into second on the overthrow. But the out at first is a little slow on that turn. Uh, But they got the lead runner. But on the overthrow. Creech gets to second base. You know, something about Creech that uh, I just learned recently is that he's also an academic kid, too. He had all academic counters for Winfield, um, and he's a big-time hooper. So, one out, ball one here to Palmer. That's in the dirt, two and zero oh now to Palmer. You know, if I'm a if I'm a pitcher catcher battery here, Palmer's uh, he, you know he's on that white line. I gotta challenge him in. He's taking away that whole outer half. 
get in on his hands, right? Yep. Weak contact. And that ball's high. It's 3-0 and now to Palmer. Winfield, this is where they've struggled. They've, they've not been able to score runs. That's uh, a walk now. You're seeing that. Uh, like, uh, you know, for M Colin, he also just leading the game off, also leads a team in RBIs with just 10. And I know that some of these stats are probably manipulated because they're not all of them. Yeah. Um, but there's a big gap, big difference uh, between him and the rest of the, the team. All right, the DH core hammer now at the plate, two on, one out, curve ball inside for strike one. Andy's got that blonde hair. They got to call him Thornhammer. We're asking <laughs> after the game. We are we, definitely. We're definitely asking that question. He did go around. That's quickly 0 and 2 now. We got time called by the catcher Schneider to go out and talk to his teach you in these small in these smaller schools and you're not going to let your top dogs get you. You make the bottom half of the lineup Two on, one out, and a swing and a miss. That's a good pitch, Mitch. You saw a little swag out of the pitcher right there, too. It's a big pitch for him. So Corhammer goes down swinging. Two on, and Alex Kinney, the shortstop, trying to get some runs here. We've had three runners on for Winfield, and a swing and a miss. Offense still struggling to score runs this season, and we're seeing those struggles right here. Yep. I thought that was it for Winfield for Core Hammers at bat. Outside of that, you're not afraid of the rest of the lineup. That ball is popped out. It's going to come back. Foul. Don't give up on it. Yeah, you definitely don't want to give up on a ball over to the right side, do you? That wind is a whipping. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over the place. You're looking at the banners over here on the on the big uh, right. scoreboard, and then you look out at the flag. They're kind of going two different directions. We don't know where we're at, man. <laughs> That's a good take by Kenny. Laid off. He wanted to. He was oh, no. Got the fans starting to show up here, Mitch, at the ballpark. Yeah, it's a 2 o'clock day game, you know, for high school. It's got to be tough for some of the parents yeah. to get here. And that's why we're here, Mitch. So, and that ball uh, is smashed into the gap and is going to go to the wall. And that's going to score both Creech and Palmer. And Kenny is in head first. Two out, two RBI, triple here today. Man, he got a hold of that one, Mitch. That that was big, based on the you know kind of just looking at the season in a nutshell. I mean, his kid's hitting 150 on the year. You know, comes up with a big two out double right there for Winfield. That is big. That is beautiful. They needed that. Meyer left that one just a little too fat right there, Mitch. They go back to that off speed that he just missed. You know, and that's why that's why I always think with two strikes you got to be competitive with your pitches. Ball one to Luke Pruitt, the catcher. Seeing if they can get that next run in here with two outs. Swinging a miss, strike one. You typically don't see this uh, uh, anymore is the, the close stance. Um, Pruitt hits with a, a close stance. You've got that left foot uh, instead of the back foot, you know, closest to the line. He's got that front foot, and then he opens, actually. Ground ball. Coach Stokes with the nice play and the throw. There you go. Show off the handles, Coach. The coach is happy. He's just scored two outs, <laughs> two <laughs> runs on with two outs. Yeah, yeah. He's like, He'll take Woo! It. <laughs> yeah. If I if I'm if I'm Meyer here, I'm trying to throw him a little something off speed outside, change up something. He'll step out. One and two, and a swing and a miss for strike three. So two strikeouts in the inning. But uh, the big triple 
gets two runs here for Winfield. We're going to the bottom of the first inning score, 2 nothing Winfield. Guys, uh, talk to us about uh, legacy. What has it been? Uh, how has it helped you uh, continue to grow as players? I feel, I feel like they've been helping my knowledge in baseball advance from where it was last year and helping like me know my swing and know my mechanics better than I could anywhere else. Legacy Performance Academy is a unique sports facility that encompasses strength training, speed and agility training, pitching lessons, hitting lessons, fielding and catcher training, a recovery room with focus on injury prevention, youth developmental, and elite high school baseball teams. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636-579-7346. Located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. With Creech on the bump today for uh, Winfield, we were just kind of talking about it with the uh, opportunity of this young man and his skill set. He might just need those two runs, and he might be in cruise control. Um, his first inning, I thought, um, you know, last time we saw him, uh, he had got deep into counts. And so can he compete? Are you talking about the first yeah. game this year? Central that was Russell. Colin Morse. That started? Yeah, that was Morse that started. Well... I stand corrected. Or you're sitting corrected, whichever. I am sitting. <laughs> so we'll go. Either way, I'm, I'm sorry, co I Either way, I'm corrected. <laughs> but again, it was with, you know, going into that game, St. Charles West was make, make them pitch early. And so for St. Uh, Charles today, they need to make this young man do the same. Just try to get him deep into counts to try to get him out early. Er. So this uh, leading off here, Caleb... Uh, McCullough Mitch, center fielder, a big kid. Yeah, I was looking at that. I was like, is is he actually leaping right. off? I thought maybe like two hole or um, you know uh, whatever. But he he you know he's got uh, quite a few runs scored. So obviously he's getting himself on base uh, and giving his a team opportunity to drive him in. <laughs> so the Pirates. Going to want to try and get back here. I was looking out there, though. I mean, I, I appreciate it, but I'm thinking, come on, fellas. Look at all these guys. You need to wash your draws, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess if you're throwing strikes, it really doesn't matter, right, Mitch? That's it. <laughs> That's it. See, Mama don't wash the pants anymore. <laughs> Curveball, that's a nice curveball on that inner half. Rolls over, strike two. Uh, Creech uh, committed to Jeff Coe after this season. Little quick pitch. Right. You know, I'm 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 a I'm a fifty fifty kind of guy on it. Did you see Nasty Nestor? I know you're a big Yankees guy. You love your Yankees <laughs> and you love your pinstripes. Did you see what he did the other day? I did not. He I took the not. ball out of his glove and act like he was gonna throw it. And then threw it. Is that right? Yeah, as if it's from the, the wind up. And he went you know how he does it little goofy leg kicks and stuff like that, and as he was doing a goofy leg kick, kinda showed the ball, then stuck it back in his glove and went. So he was 0-2, and uh, he has uh, gone 3-2 and two on the leadoff, McCullen. And he misses missed. low and in for a leadoff walk. Just missed. I think if he gets that pitch early in the count, he might go down swinging there or get jammed. That was a good pitch. He needed that a couple pitches ago. Yeah. Because that's in and I mean, it's in between. It's in the river. I don't know what baseball calls it. I'm, I'm thinking softball. <laughs> the, the space between the plate, the corner, and the, the white line, we call that the river in softball. So a quick throw over, but he's back. Runner's going, and the ball is popped up in the air, shallow in the infield. Under it, Kenny makes a catch, and this is not going to be an easy uh, – sky for this today mitch uh yeah there's a ton of I, I think for me it's the wind that's up there that's that's circling 
Uh, driving in today, uh, it was pushing the big trucks all over the road. So it was a good oh, yeah. 20, 25, 30 mile an hour winds um, getting in here today. So one pitch, one out, and we have the third batter, Nick Basancet. Goes over across the field for one out. I'm going to have to get that gentleman, that young man's grandpa back up here. <laughs> That's interesting for St. Charles right there. They don't have, um, you know, many guys with, with top end speed or many stolen bases on the year, but two pitches after, you know, he works a full count, they go down, hit and run right away and put themselves in a tough situation. Jacob Myers now the pitcher, two outs, runner at second. Creech uh, working around that leadoff walk so far. And that ball is hit into right field, and the catch made out there by Colin Morse to end the inning. And after that leadoff walk, one, two, three, we're going to the top of the sec first, second inning. There it is, second inning. Winfield, do nothing. What better feeling than watching your son or daughter pitch their best game? Catch the game winning out or crush a stand up double? That comes with talent and long hours of hard work that got them there. That's exactly where Legacy Performance Academy comes in, matching the hours of work, drive, and dedication to help your athlete build a legacy that lasts. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636 579 7346, located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. Well, Leadoff hitter walks on a 3-2 count. And uh, the next three batters, the 2-3 and 4, one pitch, one out for Creech. Um, not sure if you're supposed to say hat, tip your cap to the pitcher or uh, uh, we have to have a better approach um, offensively uh, for St. Charles. But leadoff hitter does get on, and Creech was able to work around that, um, getting back to his fastball and challenging the young men uh, from St. Charles. We're still trying to figure out that young man's name, Mitch. <laughs> Basansane? Yeah, that's what the coach called me. Okay, Basansane. Yeah. Okay. He told me the Ah, we're working it out. All right, we're going to the second inning here. Caden. Or, excuse me, Cand Camden Palmer now uh, leading off here for the Warriors. Followed by Brennan Howard and uh, Cooper Martin. Wind kind of died down. I'm a little scared. You know what happens usually when... Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's coming, but there, there is something coming. It's, ha it's in Columbia right now. Outside, ball one. Yeah. Well, it's not going to come over here, Mitch. Hey, as it's long, not. As long it's as it missed away. this beautiful field at, at Car Shield. I were, it's not going to do it. You know, I'm not, I, I uh, always wasn't the biggest fan of TikTok. And then one day I was watching it, and they told me what the 30 or 60% meant as far as predictions. Strike one. For weather. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah. I didn't realize that thirty percent chance. But was you can only learn that on the weather the channel too. You know. I am <laughs> watching the weather channel. <laughs> Three and one. I usually don't <laughs> get. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> TikTok weather channel. I guess it works, right? I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> uh, ball four. So another leadoff walk here. Brennan Howard. I, I have to ask. Yes, sir. Do you watch the Weather Channel like for more than 30 seconds? No, not really. Okay, good joke then. I liked it. I, was, I, thought, <laughs> I, I thought you actually kind of sat down and was like, oh, what's going on in L.A.? You know, what's going no. on in New York? No, no, no. Strike one. I, uh, I've, if I do watch any kind of weather, it's it's usually from the internet. I go to the the website, check the stuff out. But that's about it, Mitch. You have a favorite weather app? Fox. 
<laughs> and they didn't pay me for that. That was loud. <laughs> Go get it there, bud. They've always been pretty pretty accurate, pretty consistent, you know. Is it the weatherman that you chase? Dave Murphy, remember? Oh, yeah. I'm retired now. Oh! Pull that barrel right down. Right over his melon. Now it's uh, Zimmerman. He's fun. Where's his converse? Chuck Taylor's. I don't, I don't watch Weather Channel. That's uh, Fox 2 weather. Yeah, I don't watch any Anything? news. Anything? Yeah. Yeah. Three and one, Mitch. Meyer's struggling here to find the strike zone. The internet never lies, so I just always go to the internet for my info. <laughs> <laughs> or at least TikTok. <laughs> I did. And the dancing weather girl, right? <laughs> uh, the Mexican weather channel. So two consecutive base on balls, and we got uh, two on with no outs. And we got a trip by Coach Bickle to the mound here. We're having way too much fun up here. <laughs> it's, just, it's like, you know, when you watch Shrek and they have, it's a kid's movie, right? But they have adult humor in it. Yes. I just slid that in there and I don't know that you heard me and I just kind of just punched no, it in I'm, there. No, I'm watching the ball game. It's, it's oh, what I am I, it's, too. That's what I do. It's my job. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Just got to be quick with it. Quick with it? Yeah, that was a moment. Did you see... Yeah, we'll we'll cover that here in a minute. We'll it's a long it. visit. I, I, it is a long visit. That was a short visit, actually. I love that Rick out there getting it done. The the oh the umpire. What's his name? Rick. Rick, just not know the last name. Uh, you know, I I have it in my mind, but I I think I'm wrong. So I'm not going to say it and be wrong. That's we'll catch fair. up with Rick. And a bunt back to the pitcher. That's a good bunt. Good play. And the out at first. Nice, nice job. I almost thought they were kind of staring at each other there, Mitch, and I didn't know if they were going to get it in time. Uh, well, I'm looking elsewhere on the field. To, 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 and this is for Winfield's information. The third, The corner's never moved. He bunt, if he doesn't bunt that ball right back to the pitcher, he might give himself a hit. Right. Because none of the corners moved. So everybody stayed put, and we have two on, one out now. We're back to the top of the order with Morris, who walked, or excuse me, singled his first time at bat. Strike one. You can see St. Charles doesn't want to give up any more runs to these guys playing in on defense. He must just be a little down on that pitch. One and one. I like the elevation, but it's tough to tell right. height on, on the pitching, on the pitches. Yeah, we can't be armed to your umpires today, Mitch. And another single over the head of the shortstop drawn in infield and coach stops the runner at third RBI single by Colin Morse if he's at regular depth there Mitch it's routine I think that's an out right yeah but this is this is a t you know St. Charles recognizes you can't give them too many opportunities here agreed you know, agreed with who they got on the mound you, you got a limit so that's a tough call but we're seeing that in the GACs. We see that a lot, we, even early in the games. That for, It could be the first inning. They're playing in. It's just a chance. It's a decision you make. you got to live with the results. Got to live with it. Brady Creech now, who reached on a fielder's choice and scored, takes ball one. So we're already back through the first part of this lineup in the second inning. And that is uh, that's a lot of pitches for this uh, for Myers. Yeah, with that shoulder injury, he's wondering how long he's going to be able to go. Well, Bickle, Coach Bickle did say he was on a pitch restriction. That ball's hit in the air, and it looks like it's going to beat over and the, bounces over double. the wall for a ground rule double. That got up in the wind and carried a little bit. And uh, Morris is going to have to stop at third because he was at first base. Ground rule double. 
Uh, so that scores Howard from third. And so we've got second and third. And Caden Palmer, who walked, is up to bat. Still no outs. Uh, excuse me, one out from the sack. Correct, Mitch. Go ahead and correct me. You can say it out loud, bro. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Strike uh, one. I forgot about the sacrifice, too, myself. I was just asking. It was more of a question <laughs> to like, you. like, <laughs> uh, I didn't know either. <laughs> I just looked out there real quick. It's a small scoreboard for what they use. You know, they have the big one over here for, of course, the hoots. But you got to find, you got to locate the one out there. At least it's nice, bright, and red. You can see it. Ooh. Whoa! I believe the one down on the on the uh, big wall. That's a manual one, though, right? Yes, it is. It's that old school manual. I think it's cool. Stays up, ball two, two and one now. Second and third, one out. The Warriors trying to break this open here, Mitch. Oh, good pick. St. Charles caught a break there with that um, ground rule double there. Because if that ball hits the wall and comes, stays in the field of play, that that's an easy triple and uh, Morse to score from, you know, scores from first. Absolutely. So 3 1. And that ball stays up and in for ball four. So the base on balls. And this is getting away from uh, Myers quickly. Base is loaded, one out. And if, if they're not going to do it, we're going to. Thor Hammer. <laughs> you got to love it. Aiden Thor Hammer is up to. I mean, even got the locks, man. The golden yep. locks. Yep. I love it. You might need to do some more forearm curls and some, you know, bench pressing to get that uh, muscle that Thor has, but <laughs> he's got time. And a ground ball to the third baseman. Out at two. Oh, he drops the ball. Or that would have ended the inning for the Pirates. They had that turn there. Run scores out at second, and we've got a 5 nothing ball game. That is a big-time mistake there for St. Charles. He would have had the ability to get out of that inning. Um, well, he went to, you know, looked at home right away and then realized uh, his base runners, and that's why you pre-pitch plan. You know the, uh, know who you're, you know, know who's running know, uh, at every position, and they almost flipped that. Should have flipped it. So Alex Kinney, who did triple his first at bat, and that's tough. You get, you're out of that inning right there. But now you got to face this kid that just hit one to the wall last inning. Two and zero. Oh. This this is always tough as a coach too, because you know when you got a young man that goes out there and if he's on a pitch count and he could have got himself out, maybe it started another inning. If you just get a little deeper, give a little bit more confidence to the young man up, uh, getting out of the inning. Um, that's tough. It is tough, Mitch. Hit in the air, center field. It's a lot of wind. Nice catch, boy. Uh, that battled that a little bit, but that ended the inning, so no more damage done except uh, some extra pitches. We're going to the bottom of the second inning. Score 5 nothing, Winfield. Guys, uh, talk to us about uh, legacy. What has it been? Uh, how has it helped you uh, continue to grow as players? Uh, it's been really good. Practices are very structured, um, and the facility is really nice. We can get in there and get swings whenever we need, and it's overall pretty nice. Legacy Performance Academy is a unique sports facility that encompasses strength training, speed and agility training, pitching lessons, hitting lessons, fielding and catcher training, a recovery room with focus on injury prevention, youth developmental, and elite high school baseball teams. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636-579-7346, located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. Prior to the game starting, the home plate umpire, I'm going to assume, had served uh, at some branch for the United States because military. I'm not sure. Do you know what, sure, what branch? Marine. 
That makes sense the way he was yelling at everybody just now. <laughs> but anyways, Rick, I uh, don't know your last name, but thank you for uh, serving our country and to all the men and women out there. Uh, thank you. We'll holler out to Rick between innings here uh, from the booth here. I guarantee I'll get his attention. We'll say hello. Uh, Billy Buchanan, he's been around here a long time, one a long time umpire, an official here, uh, a signer for the GSL, uh, working the first baseline. So veteran crew out here today for the classic. Love it. I would say a lot of high school baseball is probably veteran crews. There's not a lot of young people that umpire. I know. And we need to get that. So if you want to umpire, get out and do it. Plenty of places to start. Absolutely. Curveball grounded to the third baseman. Palmer up with it, throws across. Oops, stay on the bag. Oh, he hung on there. Out number one. This is the thing about turf that's always tough. When you have one of them little, you know, it's kind of stretch plays. You have nothing for that shoe to dig in. Not even, uh, you know, the, the rubber or the molds. They don't really dig into the turf, so you could lose that, um, you know, lose that bag there. You almost did it. One out. Hayden Schneider, left fielder, takes ball one. So after that full count, I mean, Creech has been very economical with his pitching here. Mitch competing in the zone, a little low there. Ball two, two and zero. Oh. Just as I say that, <laughs> he goes two and zero oh here. Rocking the old uh, Air Jordans, the retro. Yeah, those are ones. It's got to be the shoes. It's got to be the shoes. Two balls, one strike. Ooh. I, I loved it. The TV back in those that time frame kind of embraced some of the rivalry that with the you know Spike Lee, the Knicks, the oh yeah, the, you know the MJs. Swing and a miss, strike two, three and two, one out. You always loved it when Reggie Miller went to the Garden, all right, <laughs> with the Pacers. Yep. Ball four. Young man. Uh, all right. I'd like to say know your situations, but I've done that a few times. So Sometimes it does happen. You lose your train The worst one is when it's a strike three and you don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Curtis Harris, the DH now, turns and squares Ooh, the button, and he attempt. did offer, but the ball gets away because it was over his head. <laughs> and the run, so it worked out <laughs> and didn't Man. have to give up an out. Gave up a strike, but didn't give up the out. There Might you go. need to check those britches later. <laughs> that one was right between the eyes. Robertson on deck. Fastball swing and a miss. Strike two. So the only blemish so far for Creech is a couple of base on balls. Fastball grounded to the first baseman. Oh, and it took a hop away from. Oh, and he's coming home. And that ball is going to go. No, it doesn't go into the dugout. And the run scores. So the hop away, the error on the first baseman, it could have been avoided, but that ball just was spinning so much, hops away from the second baseman. And then the overthrow, uh, or the catcher doesn't make the catch, and the run scores. So, Curtis at second, Matthew Robertson at the plate, the right, uh, the right fielder, and we go. And he turns and squares the bunt, pops it straight back foul. That was quite the exchange there, Mitch. There's a whole lot going on, you know. Is it the English that it had once it hit that turf just shot away from the second baseman because he was there to make that play. But tough read. You don't know. You really can't see that spin. Strike oh, two. Behind. Oh, that ball was that wind was pushing that ball away from the shortstop. Yeah, that's tough too because you get as that wind blows in, it's just like all of a sudden here comes your changeup and it's dirty. 
It's going to be a dirty one that throw a hundred and, uh, what is it, 128 something feet or whatever it is? Yeah. 120. 100, what is it? 120. What is it? Somewhere in there. Between 120 and 130. We're not going to guess. <laughs> <laughs> Swing and miss. I should know this because I caught. But. For a strikeout of Robertson for out number two. So we got the first out, a ground out, a K, and in between that, uh, some shenanigans. And we got, a, we got a run scored for the Pirates. Shenanigans. I, you know, I, I was thinking as that throw was being made, someone needed to kick that bat out of the way. That ball is outside. Ball one to Colton Hadler, the shortstop. And that ball is grounded foul. That's what you call it. I think somebody was hearing whispering saying Hodler. Is yeah. that correct? Hodler. Got it. Thank you. You could say it louder. Yeah, we don't <laughs> mind. We would rather have it correct than not. Thank you very much. Thank I would you. bet that's mom. Yep. There you go. I love that. So 0 and 2. <laughs> Ball one. One and two to Hodler. Swing and a miss. Oh, I must have been wrong. I had it flip, Mitch. It was two and two now. Fastball just got a piece of it. Stays alive. Creech uh, put that one up in the zone, trying to throw it by him, Mitch. Yep. Oh, good curveball. Had him off balance, strike three. We're going to the top of the third inning, score 5-1, Warriors. What better feeling than watching your son or daughter pitch their best game? Catch the game winning out or crush a stand up double. That comes with talent and long hours of hard work that got them there. That's exactly where Legacy Performance Academy comes in. Matching the hours of hard work, drive, and dedication to help your athlete build a legacy that lasts. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636 579 7346, located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. There's a sad day today for St. Louis Cardinals baseball, Kansas City Royals baseball, with Whitey Herzog passing away at the uh, age of 92. Uh, the White Rat. Um, those 80s Cardinals were fun to watch, and as I was uh, coming in today, there was a e uh, ESPN 101, I guess, uh, had uh, George Brett ha on uh, talking about uh, Whitey, and it's one of the things that uh, George remembers the most was the confidence that Whitey Herzog gave him on the field saying, you're going to be my everyday third baseman if I'm your coach. And I think that's what he did when, uh, for St. Louis Cardinals athletes, obviously brought in Ozzy made, you know, the Willie McGee's of the world, the Vince Coleman's, um, man, the eighties were a fun time to watch baseball. It was. And here's a, here's a fun fact. This is a fact I'm, um, studying for my, to take my, um, driver's permit exam. In 1982, it was, uh, I think, game four of the World Series between the Milwaukee Brewers. That ball is to the backstop. Milwaukee Brewers, and I'm sorry, I'm going to do this real quick because uh, we want to go here real quick. Uh, this is Luke Pruitt at the plate. The catcher for the Warriors takes ball one. And a ground ball off the end of the bat to the first baseman. Makes the throw. Good PFP there. That's a fantastic PFP. I like that. Myers hustling over to get the out, recording 3-1. Out number one. For those who are watching, hopefully you know what a PFP is. Uh, yeah, please. And uh, finish the story real quick. Went to take my test the next day and failed it miserably. So, moral of the story, do not be watching the World Series trying to study for your driver's license exam. <laughs> oh, man, stories. <laughs> One out. Camden Palmer, the second baseman. 
<laughs> He's saying that he can't oh, drive now. Oh, that's the gallery right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, strike one. You should have studied more is what they're saying. <laughs> Stays up. One and one. Were you like a 70% score on your driver's test? I, I don't know, man. It's so long ago. That's been a few minutes. I got you. It's Flintstones time frame, wasn't it? I know you just said 1982. It seems like it's been that long ago. Two and one. Oh, that was, you know, 82 World Series. That was a good World Series. Man, you know, the 1980s World Series logo in general are my favorite logos for the World Series. Popped up, and that. Watch it. Somebody it help him. Got foul. Somebody's got to help that young man over there so you don't run into that brick wall. Oh, there's another story for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a great story for you right there. Uh-oh. We're going to get to that here. Okay. Uh, between innings, we'll come back to that after, after the break. I got one for you from this field, actually, reminding me of that. Three oh, that, and two now. This can't be good. To Palmer. That's like thigh high, so anything that you're going to tell me, someone did cartwheels. I'm feeling like someone got hurt pretty good. Ball is popped into center field shallow. Under it, the center fielder McCullen makes the catch for out number two. That's why the big guy's out there. He's got some good reads. He does. He plays that position pretty well, Mitch. Big kid. Big kid. He didn't panic. He, you know, he didn't. You know, you see that kid. He just kind of found the ball, then made. He didn't try to go back or forward, whatnot. That's a tough read out there today. Strike one to Howard. Looks like Myers has kind of settled in here a little bit, Mitch. Swing working, and a miss, 0 and 2. Working quick, but again, this is the bottom half of that lineup for Winfield, and you got to take advantage of your opportunities. Check him. Oh, he called it. And Blake he called it. Punched him out on the check swing. Said he went for out number three. And we go to the bottom of the third inning. Score 5 1 Winfield Warriors. Legacy Performance Academy is a unique sports facility that encompasses strength training, speed and agility training, fielding and catcher training, pitching lessons, hitting lessons, a recovery room with focus on injury prevention youth developmental, and elite high school baseball teams. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636-579-7346. Located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. Rick, how you doing, buddy? All right, here's the story, Mitch. We're playing out here fall ball. Justin's pitching. Or he's playing. We're playing the Gamers, I believe. Fall ball tournament. And uh, I got, he's playing third base. I'm on the bucket coaching the game there. Um, he goes over. I'm like, you got room. You got room. And it was right there just on, between the seat. It was that one right there, the seat and the wall. And he hits the wall with his knee. And the ball hits his glove, and he doesn't catch it. I was like, dude, you should have caught the ball. And he's like, well, you should have told me. I said, you had room. Got to catch that. But, but we found out later it really was a, a d tough thing is he banged his knee. We took him to the doctor. It, was, it, it, it hurt him pretty good. He had to do some rehab. But to his credit, he took some ibuprofen, went, took the mound in the next game with the knee brace, Oh, that's a nice curveball. Strike one. Uh, pitched a, a complete game. Uh, two hitter for the win. <laughs> he was tough. Uh, so leading off, Caleb McCollum. To this day, he doesn't trust Brick Wall. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Brick no. Walls don't move. <laughs> but he hit his glove. He's got to catch that ball. He does have to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it hits the glove. Swing and a miss for strike one on the strikeout of McCullen. So, out number one, we got Mason Higgerson coming to the plate. 
Justin loves that story. Uh, I'm sure he does. Do you remember the Shaq versus Pujols thing? It's like an A and E or something. I know. Uh, I do not. I, I don't know if it was A and E Discovery or something. It was. Well, Shaq, outside, it would Shaq would take on professionals in other sports, so it could be every anything. Just basketball, obviously. Ground ball to the second baseman. Palmer's up with it. Throws him out for out number two. You know, basketball is his sport, so he would pick, you know, football or baseball or whatever. But he did a Shaq versus Pools. At the time, Pools was in St. Louis. And they did it here, the event, and show Shaq hit, like, from second base, and they did it like a home run derby. Pools was hitting. I was standing down there where the Christian high school sign is. I was sitting in those seats. Hits a missile right at me. <laughs> we have... Real quick, uh, Nick, how do you say it, Lauren? We'll ask the public address announcer. Hit by Bisonsonis. pitch. Bisonsonis. Bisonsonis. Hit by a pitch. Okay, Nick Bisonsonis, the catcher. Hit by pitch. Hit by pitch, and he's on base. Thank you, Thank you Mitch, for paying attention. <laughs> Yeah. Jacob Myers now flow out to who? So the runner at first. Myers trying to. Oh, ball gets past the catcher and to the wall. And the pinch runner, or is that the catcher running? No, yep. the catcher's the, running for himself. The runner, yeah. Sanson, he's out there getting it done. Getting it done. So back to back to the Shaq versus Pujols thing. So I'm out in left field, and my the entire dugout was filled with. Um, and that ball's of, away from the catcher. A late break. He was going back, but makes it to third base. Uh, so all the dugout is filled with rascal jerseys full of men's baseball players I have played with. Uh -huh. And so they got, you know, Shaq and Poole, so y'all did change and all this, this fun stuff. It's good stories that are not for the air, but ball gets smoked to me, hits me right in the hands, hits me in the face, goes in the back of the field. Uh, Ball's fouled back out of play. <laughs> this, is, this is no joke. The entire dugout is just giving me the business all the way over there, and it made it on TV. It was one of the few oh. home runs it made on TV. And the announcer made fun of me, or like the – and that ball's Let's rifled beat. into nope. right field. Morris underneath it makes the catch and ends the inning. They strand one. We're going to the top of the fourth inning. Winfield five. Pirates one. What better feeling than watching your son or daughter pitch their best game, catch the game winning out, or crush a stand-up double? That comes with talent and long hours of hard work that got them there. That's exactly where Legacy Performance Academy comes in, matching the hours of work, drive, and dedication to help your athlete build a legacy that lasts. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636-579-7346, located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, I'll finish my story since we're in between innings. We we get on air and uh, this is you know they recorded it and then obviously just uh, made the show or whatever and and uh, I end up making it on TV. Um, they gave me they gave me some of the business, even the uh, the show's uh, lead guy or what I don't remember his name, but uh, basically called me an overweight guy and. Uh, <laughs> He's like that. That's a that's a guy who doesn't play baseball. Something like that. It was, and I was thinking to myself, man, I got like thirty home runs in the last four years. I'm like, I play baseball. Just I was I just overweight. I just a DH. I just DH. There's a reason why I don't catch. And I had a bruise. I'm not kidding you, Brian. I had bruises on like in the the pads of your fingertips. Oh. You know where your knuckle bends on the inside of the hand is all bruised up. It bruised me my chin, and it 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 actually hit me like. Hand, chin, chest, belly, whatever, and went back in the field of play. I got booed. I bet. 
They get, I mean, the whole everybody gave me business. You. So I asked the, one of the little kids who was out there fielding. I said, "Hey, can I get that ball?" He threw it back into the infield. <laughs> Man, he said, yep. no, nah, I ain't doing it. I was like, dang. It was you, like you a, missed it. Yeah, it was like a 12-year-old, too. All right. Number 12 come in for number two. And outside. I don't have him on the list, Brian. I don't either. Timmy Emmons. Well, we got the Timmy from the dugout. Timmy. That's a 3-0 and count here for Emmons. It was Mike Goldberg was the uh, Shaq versus Pujols. I had to look it up. Ball four. So the leadoff walk for Emmons. Top of the fourth inning, nobody out. We're back to the top of the order here again for Winfield. Colin Morse, who has singled twice, he's two for two, a run scored. Takes ball one. You know, I thought Meyer was going to be, after that second inning, uh, when they went out and scored those three runs there, I thought that might have been close to his end, but uh, he's obviously competed very well for St. Charles. Absolutely. Popped foul. Catcher going to get him. out of play. That catcher needs to get to the screen, right? That's what the coaches say. Get to the screen. Help your uh, help your fielders. Help your guy. One and one. Fundamental baseball. Fundamental baseball. He's running. He's got that run look. Got the oven mitt on. Nope. Strike on the outer half. The kids say that that's a, that's a plus 10, Brian. That's right. You get the oven mitts on, it's a plus 10. Increasing the speed, right? Yep. On the old plus 10. I need one for my feet, my hands, <laughs> my back I need pockets. a plus 40. Yeah. It's outside. Ball two. Two and two. The Morse. You know, it's one of the things like uh, it's seeing some of the bigger schools that, you know, have a little bit few more athletes to make some changes for, you know, courtesy runners, things like that. You don't find these small schools have a lot of stolen bases on the year. No. Ground ball through the hole. That's three singles in a row here for Morris. He's having a good offensive day Keep at the top of the order. Here comes Coach Bickle. I think this is going to be it for Myers. You got no one chasing him yet unless well, he's calling from the bench. Well, I don't see anybody in the bullpen out there, Mitch. There's two kids out there right where that RBI crew is. Is that they're right? It, yeah, they're bringing in a lefty, left-handed. Those are two kids out there, right? Can you see the sign? The RBI crew in the baseball card shop? See it? Right next to your insurance protector. Those are two kids leaning over there. Is that trash can lids? <laughs> that might be I trash. I don't see anybody out there. That actually there. might be trash can lids. They might. I thought that they were hanging over like the fence. You know, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're they're oh. trash can lids, aren't they? <laughs> oh, man. What a winner. This is, there's a reason why I only hit fastball. Oh, there's, no, there's a reason why I only hit fastballs, Brian. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hayden Snyder now coming in uh, to pitch for uh, oh, man. the Pirates. We'll get you some numbers. Uh, Hayden's got six six games. Um, he's pitched in this year. He's got one start. He's got 13 innings on the year, 6-8 uh, ERA. Um, giving up some walks, but he's also got some good you know Ks on the season. So. He's got the ability, and maybe he's – oh, catch or break his glove. Uh, 
Looks like some quick therapy. Oh, he hurt himself. Uh, you can see that sometimes happening um, with a lefty. The hey, man, I can't. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still chuckling over the fact that I thought that uh, those trash cans were two heads just sitting out there looking over, looking over the wall, just kind of hanging out watching the game. It is not. So the numbers here for Jacob Myers, three innings pitched, four hits, five runs, five earned, five base on balls, and three Ks. Um, the big hits, the walks are really kind of what uh, did him in there, Mitch. Yeah, free passes, right, and, and just in general. Um, you know, he has one less run scored if they flipped a double play, which should have happened, you know, and so – you know, those are those are moments uh, you hope that the young man obviously learns from um, because he was able to every time he competed in the strike zone, he got outs, he got opportunities. I know the one man, young man hit it hard and the leadoff hitter for Winfield's got three hits on a day. But at the end of the day, compete. Right. And he's working around some of that. Yeah. Um, but it's the free pass and the free pass walks, hits by pitch, you know, and, and errors uh, eliminate it. I know that's the obvious. Um, but that's. It's that's why it's the odds. Those are the runs those that are, are scored, things, though. Right. Those are the those are the runs on the board. So Brady Creech now. Creech is zero for two. I wonder if that was for show or if that was gonna. Excuse me, one for two. If he was really trying to bunt there. Takes ball two, and so it's quickly 2-0 to Creech here for Schneider. Two on, nobody out. Top of the fourth. In the dirt, 3-0. You have 5-1, you give him the green light? Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you could give this guy the green light. Ball four. Yeah, I'm green lighting them. So the base on balls loads the bases here. Caden Palmer, third baseman, walked twice and scored, takes ball one. Got blue in the field. <laughs> Moving a little late here. Oh, I hit him. That ball is by the catcher. He spiked that one and scores easily as uh, em uh, Emmons on the wild pitch. Everybody moves up a bag, free base, and we got a 6-1 ball game. Free bases. 2-0. and Our softball used to say we love free bases. Ground ball to the second baseman. He looks at the runner, but Morris was off on the hit. It wasn't hit hard enough, Mitch. Nope. So the RBI for Palmer on the ground out for the first out of the inning. Going back to the uh, pass ball that allowed that run to score there, for any, anybody out there watching that's got first baseman there coaching, uh, tell them to back that play up just in case he does overthrow the pitcher, which happens often. Ground ball past the diving third baseman. Thor hammer scores Creech from third, and it's an eight-one ball game. Do you think it? Do you think it, 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 he just has to be called Thor hammer, right? I just called him Thor hammer. Can I know. We, I know his name is Core hammer, but dang man, that's just too good. His number is twenty-four. Twenty-four. So, so we can go with two Thor instead of two four. Two Thor yeah. hammer. There you go. I like it, man. Oh, man, that's... We're getting kooky up here. Alex Kenny tripled and flied out to the center fielder, takes strike one. Ah, good dad jokes. Good dad jokes. <laughs> I was dad joking all weekend with pasta jokes. Don't be an impasta. And he is hammered foul. Just quite couldn't keep that fair, Mitch. 
Yeah, how I many? This this is this is fun for like trying to learn because that darn corner down there, uh, you know, you get a lot of baseballs that hook and hit that corner and just shoot straight out to left field or even back towards the infield. Right. And you can you watch a lot of young players that play out here over you know overrun that. It's kind of like that cardinal. Yep. You know. Yep. Boom! Jumps out there. Curveball fouled out of play. I thought that was just going to spin up there. It, it, it was just movement. kind of. Yeah, yeah. This this why we encourage our kids pregame kind of walking the fields as a as a high school kid kind of walk the field and pay attention to some of the different cuts in the field. Curveball pops up. Shallow. Left field under it to make the catch is oh number two yeah it's number two right Jacob Myers Jacob Myers I've I had to look see real quick who replaced who so out number two see where he caught that baseball yeah about ten steps behind the shortstop that That's tells you how he, much wins up there is moving yep I mean, you could see where he's playing. He was playing that same death just now, the, the previous guy. And, I mean, that, that's probably a 90 feet, 100 feet. Three runs in in this inning. Thor hammers it first. Pruitt at the plate takes ball one. Pruitt is struck out and grounded out back to, or to the first baseman. He's 0 for 2. Nice job by the catcher there. Keep that ball in front. Two and zero. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb and say that Thorhammer doesn't run much for Winfield. Probably not. Probably not. I I don't think there's a lot of stolen bases in there. <laughs> you know, this is where that walking lead works for him. A guy like that. That's he does. How, he does have one stolen base, but he was caught stealing ones too. <laughs> that might have been a catcher's indifference. They just gave it to him. Hey, I'm going to give it to him. It shows it on the stats. Yeah, well, he's, got hey, no, he's got an SB. It's fair. Yeah. But I think the walking lead was created for those big guys. Absolutely. Curveball yep. strike on the outer half the for two and two count now. Got the St. Charles Warriors. Saint, excuse me, St. Charles West Warriors showing up over there, Mitch. Yeah, you're starting to see the next couple, next teams come in and uh, starting to trickle in, I guess. And that is lined into right field. Oh, nice play. And the shoestringer. He ca oh, he dropped it. I did pop out of his glove. I was watching there, Billy, at the end there. It got away from him there at the end, and uh, he caught it initially, but it got away from him. Yeah, that was a that was a tough play right there, Mitch. You got that ball way, diving. <laughs> way better eyes than I did. <laughs> I, I I thought he made I thought he made the play. So the single, I'm going to give him a single. That was that oh is, yeah, that was a yeah. tough catch. Give him give him a single. So uh, Camden Palmer now second baseman up, two on two out. Fastball strike one. This Warriors team is getting there at bats today. Fastball popped into shallow right field on the run. Oh, nice, nice play. play by the second baseman over there. Mason Hickerson to Mason. end the inning and end the threat. What a nice play, young man. Going to the bottom of the fourth inning, score now. 8-1 Warriors. Guys, uh, talk to us about uh, Legacy. What has it been? Uh, how has it helped you uh, continue to grow as players? I'm really, it's helped me a lot coming from a uh, double-A team. So two years ago, um, it's really helped me a lot and grow and just know my knowledge. Legacy Performance Academy is a unique sports facility that encompasses strength training, speed and agility training, fielding and catcher training, 
pitching lessons, hitting lessons, a recovery room with focus on injury prevention, and youth developmental and elite high school baseball teams. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636-579-7346, located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterville, Missouri. You know, we just talked about just a last half inning, or I guess the last full inning, uh, Whitey baseball, you know, Whitey Herzog passed away today, and I was thinking that play right there was that play that uh, when Ozzy Smith went over Willie on that on that diver. I was look, I was watching that. And I was like, Are we gonna get that right now? That that'd be icing on. The, well, not ice. I shouldn't say icing. That's kind of that's bad timing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in the moment of the '80s, that that was one of the most like I think one of the best plays in Major League Baseball. Defensively. Yes, I would agree. And this play Cedric Mullins but made last I, night was I, awesome. I got one that tops it. Don't tell me it's Willie Mays' catch. No. Okay. No. No, no, no. It's in the 80s. It's in the 80s. Give me some hints. Pitch and offered there by number 15, Nate Mosley, leading off here to get strike one. Um... World Series. Oh, you are going to Kirk Gibson. Of course. I, I, you're such a homer. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny makes a nice play for out number one on as, the ground ball by Mosley. Well, as I'm talking about the Cardinals, I'm like, Ozzy oh, Smith made one of the greatest plays. <laughs> Defensive plays. How about that? Okay. I'll, 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 I'll. You're gonna, I'm going to go with Kevin. Your, one of your favorite catches is Kevin Mitchell's bare hand in St. Louis. Oh, that was pretty good. Swing and a miss. Hayden Schneider up. Strike one. I would highly recommend a lot of people go out and watch 1980s baseball in the early 90s. It's a fun time to watch the game. Gr uh, bunted back to Creech. Nice play by the pitcher. To get out number two. I guess any way possible trying to get on. To, You're just trying to get on. Yeah. Down it's, seven I, I runs, know, it's tough. I, I do this with Mitch because I grew up Dodger fan. I'm still I, – I like the Cardinals. <laughs> I root for them. It's, it's fun. They're, they've always been a class organization. I've watched the Cardinals because I've been back – my dad, all my family from Missouri. So, I've been back and forth in this state. I just like to give Mitch trouble. I still don't think if you combine <laughs> the two numbers of World Series, they match your favorite team's number of they World don't. Series. The Cardinals, <laughs> Cardinals have the most championships of any National League team. I think the Dodgers only have six. Yep. Oh, good curveball, strike one, strike two. And it's crazy to think the Yankees that that evil empire over there has got twenty six. Oh. Yeah, because they kept beating the Dodgers and the Giants in New York, right? <laughs> when they, everybody was there, a ground it, ball foul. Probably because they wore pinstripes. Oh, Coach Stokes doing it again. And it's it didn't allow good. beer, uh, you know, facial hair, just mustaches. Boy, they rock some dirty ones, though, like Thurman Munson. That was a huge stash right there. Swing and a miss. It's away from the catcher. Not going to get the speedy. Excuse me, Curtis, as he gets down the line. So, on the air, he reaches first base. So, Robertson now. Got the him. Right fielder. Oh, he was. Think he got him? Yep. It was close, wasn't it? Well, I still got my sunglasses on, and it's it's uh, cloudy, but their prescription. <laughs> did he get him? Yep, did. I can't see very well, though. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Strike one. That's the definition of armchair umpiring, right, Mitch? Said we needed more young guys umpiring. That's right. This is where I start my career. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Oh, and two. Because my Robinson. playing days are over. Oh, yeah. Maybe some softball here. No, I tried to swing a bat yesterday. 
Swing and a miss, strike three. Three straight fastballs. Robertson goes down. So the inning ends. Uh, we're going to the top of the fifth inning score. 8-1 Warriors. Don't have time to train in marketing? Don't know where to start for market research? Or don't understand how to build your social presence? You don't have to. REP can do it for you. Have a full digital marketing plan ready for you to implement when starting with DIY marketing. Contact Red Earth Productions at 636-400-3199. Located out of O'Fallon, Missouri. I remember how to turn the microphone off there. Just trying to flip that thing. I kept hitting everything and whatever. Use it, it just uh, yesterday as, as I ended that last half inning there, uh, had an opportunity to just to kind of chat with a college kid. He's he's uh, in the middle of transferring, and and so he's kind of sitting this year out. So he's been working real hard on getting it back. And so he's last night decided we're gonna I'm gonna swing with him. And so I'm having a, you know feeling good. I'm I'm loose. Uh, woke up this morning. Immediately called my chiropractor when I wake woke up when I waked up. <laughs> that's that that's that in written education I got, baby. Uh, sorry for all those teachers that taught me. You guys were great. Uh, but I called the chiropractor right away, and they're like, you need to activate your back, and I'm doing all kinds of stretches. He goes to pop my back, and I cramped. <laughs> he twisted me up, and I started cramping in my core. And I'm like, man, that's how you know, as Bill Ingvall would say, here's your sign. That's right. Schneider starts the top of the fifth inning with a strike to... Uh, Brennan Howard up for the third time in this game. Struck out, walked, and scored a run. It's one and one now. Two and one. This young man on the mound is a 2025, so he's just a junior. I like his curveball. If he can get just consistent with, with, you know, obviously throwing strikes, right? That's the that's the bucket coach now. Curveball, third baseman, nice hands over there in the throw. A little offline, but nice job by the first baseman. Nate Mosley makes the play to the first baseman, number 12. Wow, did we miss one, Mitch? I think I missed one. No, I'm sorry. I, I He's being DH4. It's my fault. My fault. Aaron Keene makes the play over there. Nice job. Sometimes uh, it didn't It didn't cycle. I was looking at my ball. I go, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, he's over here. I had it all there. What didn't cycle? Still messed it up. What didn't cycle? Because the DH is for the first baseman today for the Pirates. That ball is popped foul out of play by Emmons. Your memory Rolodex didn't and turn over? And it didn't. It. I was looking at my line right here where I keep this stuff, and I was like, oh, it's in the other spot. Change up. <laughs> One and two. And, you know, we you were talking about Schneider here. Mitch, if you've got some good off-speed stuff in your fastball, you can be a good, solid high school pitcher, get guys out, throw ground balls, and be effective. Be effective. And he's left-handed. You know, you always you – know, every every coach wants that lefty that can mix that curveball and change up in. Um, you know, as, as he gets older and matures, continues to mature, he, you know, he should gain some velocity and then gain some control. Curveball. And he throws one of them curveballs that a lot of kids will give up on because it starts outside on that, you know, left-handed batter's box and it just breaks over that, you know, outside corner to the, to the righties. So, um, you know, he could throw that in three different spots, and I think he'll get outs with that curveball. That's a good pitch. Runs in and down on Edmund, Emmons, and he is out on strikes for out number two. I Back think that's to his changeup. I think that's his changeup. It looked like it, right? So you got that curveball on the outside to change up on the end, and you sneak the fastball. You got a pretty good pitch combination there. Yeah, I'm not sure if he meant to throw the, that change up there, but it was good. He, he's consistently getting inside with that pitch and getting guys to swing over it. It may be by design. Morris is three for three. He has scored twice at the top of this order. 
And he swings over the top of that pitch, one and one. Ball is hit foul out of play. One and two. Come on in here. We got we 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 want Coach Allen to come and sit down, talk with us a little bit. Oh yeah, hop in, hop in there. Ground ball two. The short stop, throw over, and that ends the that's the first one, two, three inning here for the St. Charles Pirates. We're going to the bottom of the fifth inning. Score eight one. Warriors joining us here. We're going to take a minute, Lauren. We're going to do this. We got uh, Coach Nuru Allen from the St. Charles West Warriors. And uh, Coach, how you doing, man? Uh, doing all right. Doing all right. Nuru-ing that over okay. there. There you go. Doing all right. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, uh, it could be better. To be honest with you. <laughs> I knew that. We, I knew that's what we were going to get. <laughs> yeah. uh, Coach. You know, we've talked about this a little bit. You're, you know, you guys have been up and down. You've had some good wins and you've had some bad losses. Yeah, we've definitely had the the bad losses have overshadowed the the good wins for sure. Um, you know, and then we're still kind of trying to find our way. We've got some young guys that are, you know, new to to playing and and everything else. So we're still trying to find our way. I still got high hopes for our team and everything. We still got everything in front of us, but right now we're. We're in that part of the season where, you know, we got to figure out how we're going to respond. I, I'm going to look at this. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to 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 know what's going on here. Uh, you know, your boy Colk, he's looking for his third uh, player of the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it won't be the day, unfortunately. Oh man, it's uh, it was funny. So you got. Uh, Brennan uh, Gehring going on the mound today. Yeah. Uh, what led into that decision, Coach? Um, it was just his time. Um, you know, he pitched last Tuesday, had a, had a phenomenal outing. And then, um, you know, with us kind of scuffling the way we've been scuffling, you know, we you know, want to start the week off right. And, you know, no better than going with the, our number one guy. Another bunt. Fouled back for strike one. Um, this is uh, Colton Hodler at the plate. Struck out his first at bat. We're talking with Nuru Allen, head coach of St. Charles West. That's uh, one and two. Coach, when you're talking about your team here offensively, you've had some guys that have done very well, and you've it's kind of a mixed box, isn't it? Yeah, and um, unfortunately right now um, – everybody's cold like there's there's not anybody hitting the ball like they we expected them to you know the past seven games i was going back and looking at the stats and we we're hitting a combined total of 163. um you can't win ball games that way you know wow. you go and look at the box scores and you go and, and look and you see scores of three and zero and two and five and stuff like that and from how we've been historically hitting the ball and and stuff we put a lot of pressure on teams and this year we haven't put much pressure on teams offensively um i and and we got guys that can do it and there's guys that historically have done it um and it's just right now i mean if everybody wanted to go cold at the at one time they're picking now so um <laughs> hopefully that bodes well for later on but uh, as of right now we're, we're you know we're we're dealing with some things so hodler strikes out for out number one, it's uh, one ball, no strikes, and that ball's popped foul to McCullen, who has walked and struck out. Coach, you know, at this point, you know, in the season, you're still 4-1 and one in the conference. Warrington's out in front pretty good. We got time called. But are you really focused just getting the team moving towards district play? Uh, you know, I'm, we're st we got conference still in front of us. We got everything um, in front of us right now. Like you know, so our goal of winning conference is still right there. So we're still aiming for that. But we are always gearing towards districts. So we can still gear toward districts while still accomplishing our goal of winning conference. And you know, if we find a way to 
you know, Beat Orchard Farm and, you know, and just Beat Orchard Farm today and tomorrow and hopefully Beat High on Saturday. And then everything's still, you know, in front of us. So um, I like our chances. We just we just got to get it going. That's that's it. <laughs> that is one and one. Excuse me. Two and oh to Hickerson. There's two outs now. Creech has been pitching very well today. You know, it's a similar uh, when we were talking with Coach Stokes. It's similar. It's it's been similar. Um, the inconsistency at the plate. It's been it's been up and down. And uh, I think it's a similar scenario. You guys got two good arms. Teams are pretty pretty even pretty similar in that respect. But Warrington is really jumped out that uh we're gonna get a lightning delay here folks because that one flashed in front of our eyes i didn't even see it i must have been i must have been bleaking yeah i saw that it was a ways away but there you go we heard that one so that's cool though we get a chance to talk with coach allen um hoping you got that 431 i think yours is going to be the difficulty uh we got the rain starting now got a little bit of rain uh, this is where we kind of figured this was going to kind of happen in this time frame here. Um, what was it? Yep, 3.30. Hopefully, it doesn't kill the whole day, right? I hope not because um, our guys are really itching to play. Um, we need to go out to play. We need to kind of see what how we're going to respond after, you know, having a couple of rough weeks um, and stuff like that. So uh, we're ready to go. Mitch, you got any questions for Coach Allen? I got all kinds of questions. For well, Coach here. <laughs> we're, we're still I got live. No, I got no questions. For Coach we're going to let Mitch oh, get in there. He'll get in here. Mm-hmm. All right, buddy. Uh, you know, I root for you often. Yeah. Today I have to be neutral. I got some kids that play for me over at Orchard Farm, some folks I went with high school. His son is uh, Krumer, uh, Kummer. I'm not sure how you say their last name, but he might be going against you tonight, Braden transfers from Ford's Mall uh, West. Orchard Farm's a little different club this year um, so, uh, than in the past. They've had a lot of transfers come in. Yeah. Um, this is, I think this is going to be a good matchup for you. Yeah, I mean, every time we face Orchard Farm, it doesn't, you can throw their record out of the, you know, out the window because it seems like when they face us, they bring their best every every single time. And um, last year, I mean, I think they, I think the only two conference wins they had against us was against us, uh, against in conference was against us. So, you know, we are, I mean, if our guys are not prepared to play today, then obviously I need to be looked at of something what I'm doing wrong, you know. So, um, I'm expecting Orchard Barn to bring their best. I really am. Yeah, I'm excited for that uh, for that game just because of where your program is at. Uh, in kind of the direction you're moving in, you got a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but you got good senior leadership, uh, but you got a nice little junior class. Mm-hmm. Um, would you consider yourself young? You know, I, 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 I guess so, because we got a, you know, so we got two, three seniors that we rely on, and we got probably three or four juniors rely on, and we got some sophomores that are coming in the mix. And that's kind of how we've been building our programs where we've had maybe two or three sophomores, I mean, seniors that we can depend on and then start sprinkling the younger guys and stuff. So um, I would say we're – I would say our core is younger, um, but we're not babies, you know. And a lot of these guys that are younger that we're talking about have been here and done that. So um, that kind of being, hey, we're young or, you know, I, I think that ex- excuse – needs to be thrown out you know because these guys have played enough ball especially high level ball with districts and winning conferences and everything else being in quarterfinal state a couple times these guys should know how we play how to prepare and everything else that's good for culture i i would assume because you every year you have a couple of seniors and then those couple of juniors and those couple of sophomores all have multiple years uh, or have had multiple years Mm -hmm. of playing varsity baseball which is a completely different monster because this is where wins start to matter for athletes, right? Youth sports, uh, we don't play the game to lose, but really winning a weekend doesn't mean much. Right. Um, but now it starts to matter. Absolutely. And, and so you're getting 
that turnover, but your the, the next year's class is going to be a good senior class again. And then the, the sophomores that are here now, they'll be prepared. And yep. so um, it's got to be frustrating, though, for the young kids because they're probably making young kid mistakes, you know, freshman and sophomore mistakes, just because the game is different. These kids are 18 years old versus 15 and 16. Right. Um, so speed changes. and <laughs> Absolutely. It's got, so, so for me, like – managing as a as a former high school coach myself like managing the young talent was always frustrating because sometimes you had really good seniors and they had high iq and these sophomores just don't have that yet um how do you deal with it personally for me i i would pull what little hair i had i that i have i would be pulling it out well i mean i think unfortunately i probably you probably have more hair than i do mitch so <laughs> um so you at least you got something to pull um it, it you know, I, I like with like one. With, you talk about the culture thing, and it is the the players. I'm a player led coach. The co- you know the players are the one that kind of leads the culture. I'm just the you know I'm kind of the captain. You know, but the players are the ones that are doing all things, putting things together, coming up with certain things and stuff. If I need to intervene with anything, I intervene. Um, as fo- that's close. <laughs> That's close. You talking about how you would cut an interview from Coach Allen short as if the lightning would strike, I'd be out real quick. <laughs> well, yeah. gonna, if you run out there, you're getting soaked. That's why I'm trying to keep you occupied because it's raining pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, going to be quick. It's out. The the tough stuffs behind us are you know south of us here. Um, it's just a little bit, and it looks like it's going to disappear here soon. So oh, I hope so. So one good thing I guess about playing on turf. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what we were worried about. We, you know, each week we've had one game rained out and and stuff. So we we're hoping, like, if when this does come through, hopefully it doesn't bring hail or the thunder and lightning like we just are having. Um, but hopefully this will dissipate, and then we can they can finish their game and we can play ours. Get it on playing Absolutely. under the lights, man. Gotta love night games. Absolutely, and hopefully our guys are excited and and ready to go. You know, um, but like you said, with the young guy. I like when young kids make their mistakes um, because that means they're learning, you know. And I always preach, hey, you make a mistake. Let's not make the same mistake. You know what I'm saying? Um, When we fail, okay, yeah, we failed. How are we going to rebound from that fail? How are we going to respond? We're all about responding, you know. And baseball is all – that's the game, you know. If you strike out, how do you respond to the next at bat? If you don't get a, a, a pitch called for you, Whatever, how you, what are you going to do for the next pitch or the next batter or whatever, you know? And so our guys are learning how to respond. And right now, you know, this little stretch that we've been in where it's been difficult, you know, we're going to learn a lot about our team. And we're going to learn a lot about our team, you know, today and moving forward, you know, because I'm expecting my guys to respond in the correct way. Yeah, and you talked about it. You guys are going through kind of a little bit of a lull right now for your group, uh, which – I know as a coach, you're like, you know what? I can deal with these. we got to learn from it. It only makes me better, you know, for, for the district play, which is obviously, you know, we want to win conference and things like that, of course. That's, what the, first, that's the first goal, right, to win conference. Uh, the next one's win districts. But uh, how do you survive? And you had mentioned it, just how do you, you know, how do you survive? And that, that was close. I could see that one. You good? <laughs> that, one was, that one was hot, sir. Yeah, that <laughs> – that got me. <laughs> made my hair stand up <laughs> that, a little that, on my beard, not not on my my forehead. I have to me. ask though, and, and and if you would, if you want to run out there in the rain, I am. Um, as a hitter, as as for yourself, this is for you. Did you like hitting at night or during the day? Oh, I loved hitting at night. Okay, I thought the ball was like uh, almost like a like a glow stick coming at me. You know, I loved just the way it looked. I just loved when you saw the bat off the ball, how it was travel. I loved hitting at night. You know, and I think every hitter likes hitting at night, you know, having that dark background and just you can see things better. And yeah. I know you love hitting at night. Oh, I, I, you know? I have 100 percent hit that and at Valmeyer. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to hit at Valmeyer. If anybody, and anybody that thinks that baseball's over after college, there's great men's leagues in the St. Louis area. And, and Nuru and I have played uh, together and in those leagues. It's a, a fantastic time. I uh, there's another one coming. Oh, maybe not. No thunder behind it, but uh, I, it was always tough for me to hit during the day, especially like certain fields that uh, had like certain dirt on it, you know, like the dirt that was more of like a limestone color, like a white, you uh-huh. know, um, 
I, I never seem to hit well. And, and, and playing at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Sundays when it's 105, uh, I just wanted to stay home. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> this is a little bit different, different weather playing in April in Missouri. This is the things that you got to deal with. But um, uh, I got nothing else for you, man. Good luck. I always root for you, like I said. Uh, when I'm on the microphone calling your games, uh, in the back of my mind, I'm always there for you, uh, but I got to keep it neutral. So yeah, you definitely keep it neutral. I uh, <laughs> I watched the the last one. You gave me a lot of trouble about uh, <laughs> uh, stealing at a certain point. Oh yeah, I told you I would have to the game. I would have to, and you told me your why, and I actually like that. And and, and um, I obviously wasn't on air, but what, we could talk about it for mm -hmm. a second. You guys were up big, but you told me the what could happen, and I was like, you know what? I got to give him credit for that because he was still trying to play the game of baseball. And uh, so um, the fans didn't get to hear that, but yeah, uh, I like that. I like the back and forth because that not only as a as a coach in the summer that that helps me think about stuff too. Mm -hmm. And and that's what it is. I've never been a uh, a coach to show up another team or anything else. In fact, I've I've pulled uh, pulled uh, step pulled my foot off the gas plenty of times. And that's kind of bitten me in the butt. But this time it was. One of those situations where we just didn't want them to make a force out. You know, we wanted them to, if they were to make a play, just throw it across the field, and they made a play, made a play. And so we had a guy advance to second. Um, we, I think we were up, I think we were up by nine, or you know, trying to get to that tenth run. And the tenth run was sitting at third, but we just wanted them to, you know, have to throw the ball across instead of just saying, hey, got a ground ball, step on second, then you're out of the inning. Yep. You know, so that was the strategy in me, and you know, hopefully people that know me know that. That's not, you know, I'm not a person that tries to run up the score or, or anything else like that. Stuff, yeah, it, saves so. an, it saved Adam, for, uh, Adam, I think it's Hulk's mm -hmm. first name, right? Saved him from going back out there. Like, it, it had a whole bunch of things oh, yeah. going on with that. If you can save your pitcher throwing X amount of pitches, that's the difference between, one, just wear and tear. Two, it comes down to if he's able to pitch the, like, the two, uh, the, third day or the fourth day and stuff like that so there's a lot of things that you know especially in spring where coaches got to take that into consideration I remember when we played Warrington maybe two or three years ago uh and I remember their coach you know was was kind of stealing and doing whatever and and really piled on the score I think it ended up being like 15-2 and you know at first I was like dude I go I'm, this is a little bit disrespectful but then you go and think about it, it's like, no, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to score as many runs as he can so he doesn't have to have his pitcher throw any more pitches. And, and you need, when you think of it that way, you can respect, you can respect that. And, I, and, and that's kind of where I was like, you know what, I need to get to that point to where, you know, I'm not necessarily worrying what people think. I'm worrying about my players and worrying about my team. Yep, and I, and I, I think I, I, like I want to chime into this because oh, he has I, his microphone. Yeah, I, I think this is an interesting conversation. I like that. And from a perspective of a high school coach there, I've always believed this. I, I mean, it's not my job to worry about what the other team thinks. I, it's not, you know, sportsmanship. And people say, oh, well, you know, you should. Yeah, and I've seen coaches slow it down one base at a time. And I, okay, fine. But as you said, and I think this is the interesting thing about sport, and it's tough. I understand nine and ten year olds; it's so different. But this is high school baseball. It's your job to stop me from scoring. It's not my job to stop scoring because you can't, you cannot. And and I and I always I know it's a fine line, but I'm not sitting here trying to run it up just to to do that. I agree with you. If I can lessen. Uh, an inning on my pitcher, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I just think those are things, it's, it's a tough line, but I think, I think there's a place for that. Uh, this is competition. If you beat up a team, you beat them up. I mean, it's, it's, it's I, and I know there's a lot of people that don't agree with that, but that's just a thought process. I mean, you go and say that, and we played uh... – I mean, looking at my right fielder running across the baseball field. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, he, he's really running, too. But um, we played Slow North down. Point, and North Point absolutely beat us down. It was, like I said, it was probably the worst game that I've ever coached uh, or whatever. It was, it was absolutely horrible. And uh, Coach Hillman, um, I mean, they were hitting. They were hitting. He was sub. Sub people, they were hitting. You know, you can't get mad. 
you, we got to make a play. Like all it all it came down to was, hey, we need to we need to make a play. And they weren't going to strike out on purpose for uh, just to help us out because they felt sorry for us. You know, you got to make a play. You know, and hopefully. Our guys, I mean, if they didn't get the point after that game and how I was, then there's a big problem. There was a big, there was a big, big problem. And so, um, you got to have some, uh, some pride as a player to say, you know what, I got to keep competing at a, at a different level. What's not working? And when somebody is beating you up like that, you know, how do you respond? Yep. And I think that's, that's the key. Sometimes it's just like, I want to look. In your position, I, I want to see how my team responds to that. Are you? You should be upset about that. Mm -hmm. you, I don't want to be embarrassed, and I don't think you. I, I know as a coach, you don't want to be embarrassed. Nobody does. Nope. But you're sometimes put in those situations as a competitor. There's been major league teams get beat up. Nobody likes that. Mm -hmm. So how do you not? How do you prevent that? It's not saying the other team should stop. It's what do I have to do? to get better so those things don't happen, right? It, it, exactly. And, um, you know, it was an embarrassing moment. It was one of those – it was a humbling mo moment. Um, and it was one of those things where I was probably one of the maddest I've ever been after a baseball game. And the, the kids knew it. And then we were walking in the hall. I mean, I it takes me – it probably takes me 24 hours. After 24 hours, I'm pretty cool. But, I mean, I'm walking in the halls and I'm hot. And, these, and my, every single baseball player of mine looked at me and then looked down, looked away. They couldn't make eye contact with me. And then we went to practice, and we were ready to practice, and you could see the body language and the energy was low because they didn't know what to expect from me. They, they, they didn't know if I was going to break a fungo. They didn't know if we we're going to have them run all day and everything else. And finally, right, right at the beginning of practice, I had to tell them, like, hey, boys, I go, here's, here's the real. The fact is, we played probably the worst game in St. Charles West history. No doubt about it. Um, the other thing about it is, is that we got to own that. Okay? That's what it was. So now how do we respond? I go, I know I'm mad. I go, I know I'm upset. But the thing is, I know you're upset. I know that you guys are expecting me to come out here and just run you. But is running you going to help you hit the baseball or catch it or throw it or whatever? No. Okay? You guys know what you did. I know what you did. Now we just need to get to work. Okay, and I was just like, we need to get our energy up. Okay, stop feeling sorry for ourselves because I guarantee you, North Point didn't feel sorry for ourselves. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean the kid threw a great game and did whatever he did, and they deserve every accolade from that. We just got to now respond and play better. Period. And so after that, we kind of picked our energy up, got them up, and we played. You know, and we ended up losing in Pattonville. That was a tough game that we lost there. Um, I know you're upset about that. So. Okay. So we got a four o'clock start. Thanks, Rick. Okay, buddy. Uh, umpire letting us know. I, I love this. We came to a ball game and a podcast broke out. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> this I is mean, what, well, we have the rain delay, the human rain delay, I guess. Uh, we've had a few of those guys on our baseball teams that we played together. Did you have a good practice? Like, so, so after you get that beat down, everybody's worried about whether or not you're mad. Uh, did they respond by having – ultimately, you know, they may have been uh, intimidated by practice because I, I know that that's – we carry ourselves a particular way. Yes. And so um, the kids feel that. Good, bad, and different, they feel that. And I'm like, listen, man, this is an opportunity for an op to, a day to get better. So what did you learn? You know, if they beat you, hats off, right? But it's how did you lose that game? And if they beat us, why? And then, so if you don't learn from that – that's on those boys. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is those young men playing this game. They have to learn from uh, these opportunities and to bounce back and have a good practice because sometimes you don't get to play the next day. You know, like in the big leagues, you can lose 9, 10, 11, you know, to 2, but you might come out the next game and flip that score, and that's how fast you have to turn around. High school baseball, it sometimes sits on you guys, so having that good practice – uh, probably was important for you and your group. It was very important. You know, we never want to have a team beat us twice. You know, we've had that last year. An Orchard Barn beat us uh, here um, the first game last year, and we were so upset or whatnot. That ended up pretty much why they beat us the second time. And we got to get to a point where we don't lose, have a team beat us twice because we're not prepared or we're feeling for, sorry for ourselves or whatnot. So our practice was a really good practice. It was really focused practice. It was really intentional. We did a lot of intentional things. Like, you know, I'm trying to tell these guys, hey, today we're just hitting hard ground balls. 
You know what I'm saying? And a couple of years ago, we did this, and the guys were like, I don't understand why we're hitting hard ground balls. And the thing about it is they don't realize the margin of error then increases. Then if you go and try to hit hard ground balls and you barely miss that, then all of a sudden you're hitting hard line drives. And then if you go hit a hard line drives, you barely miss that, then you might be doing something, parking something. And so we were very intentional with what we did with the approaches and everything else and then the, the just the attitude and – and everything, and I think it carried over to the Pattonville game. I mean, did we win? No. Um, we had we had plenty of opportunities. We just couldn't get it done. But this wasn't a game where I was like, hey, you know, we, once again, we did something to give the game away. Um, we, you know, they they made plays to beat us. So That's baseball. It is baseball. It, it's, it's funny for everybody out there that's like it's – this is a, that love-hate relationship feel. Um, as much as I love this game, I, I absolutely dreaded it at times because you can hit just lasers all over the field and be 0 for 15, but you can have 15 duck farts and you can be hitting 500 on the year. You know what I mean? And uh, it's, it's just a funny game, and, and it's, uh, you have to have a uh, – we always talk about our players being even-keeled, not a lot of highs, not a lot of lows, mm-hmm. somewhere in between, um, because the game the game will take care of itself. That's yep. what I've always believed in, and it's uh, and I think that's in general and just in sports because I, I think it's where we can fail and, and be paid millions, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, but uh, anyways, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Brian's not in here. I think he's out there handling some stuff. Uh, I'm sure you want to get back to your boys. Well, I'm I'm really <laughs> not wanting to get soaked. I need to get one of those cage jackets, man, because I like that cage jacket. Uh, appreciate it. You got it. a big boy size? Um, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> I need to get a. Uh, I need I an need X, but three of them. I got you. <laughs> I got you. I got two of those, but I don't know about the three. Um, I'm actually worried about my baseball pants because, you know, I came in here. All I came down to do was just give the lineup. Uh, are are they there. sitting out? Are they sitting out? Yeah. So I'm hoping it's underneath the, the awning, so I'm hoping there was a... Is it on the first base side or third base it side? It was third base side. Uh, the wind, and the wind's blowing in that way. I'm hoping that maybe uh, you know, one of my coaches or maybe a Winfield parent um, maybe said, hey, it was, you know, help the coach out. I doubt it. I was going to say I doubt it. That's <laughs> I, a good rivalry uh, over there at I Winfield, doubt so it. I know they didn't move yeah, it. They're just they like, probably put it in the rain. They might. They just say, hey, you know, <laughs> let Coach Allen wear some wet pants. <laughs> That's uh, it. You know? You know, I think it's funny. I'm pretty sure no Winfield parent's going to do that on purpose. No, uh, no. Even, I would if, just, even if it's a rivalry, but no. I, I'm not throwing shade over at Winfield. I just think it's fun stuff. But if you need a pair of pants, I can run home. I still have baseball pants. Okay. Good. Even though they, they've, they're probably four years being removed from using them, but uh, now four I year, live right down there. It's four, been a while since I played baseball. I know, but four years ago, Mitch, those, those – I was, I was smaller four years ago, actually. Really? Yeah, I was. I was about 239 then. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I was actually uh, in really good shape back hey. then. Okay, okay. <laughs> I had stomach surgery back uh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, here in a couple of weeks, it'll be 10 years. I had stomach surgery in, t- uh, in 2014, April 2014. And uh, about 2018, 2019, I was 239. Oh. I looked like a monster. Oh, I-, I was jacked. I had veins everywhere, man. I, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, for the show, I was natural. <laughs> 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 but I put I put time in the gym, man, and uh, uh, yeah, I could. Th- those are probably XL size pants, so they fit you just fine. Yeah, they should be good. They should be good. They're oh. the Manny fits, though. Remember the remember yes. the old. It's funny because I was telling everybody, it's like w- if I played with pants like that, I got made fun of because that means I was broke because my, you know, the the pants were too long and mm-hmm. I couldn't hem them up or mm-hmm. whatever. And now I see the mid calf stuff. Yeah. You know, this this straight leg mid calf can't like, do it. And, it. and it's so funny to me. I'm like, man. I literally got made fun of as an athlete, as a human. If I if I wore anything that didn't go to my ankles, yep. you know, my shoe tops, I was made fun of. And now I have, I don't know, joggers. I'm wearing joggers right now by Fabletics. Hey, I, Lululemon doesn't make my size, so Fabletics uh, does. No, does it? <laughs> so <laughs> I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, built up the courage to buy any Lululemon anything. So, um, uh, well, I can tell you the Fabletics are. Uh, so Fabletics, if you want to sponsor the show, you can. Uh, we, we got uh, we got Coach Arnett coming over here in a minute. All right, and uh, no, like your time you can is stay, up. Uh, <laughs> stay as long as you want to. We love talking to Coach Allen. He's Once fun. again, I was just here to drop a lineup card off. That was it. <laughs> we stay roped him into show. it, man. 
He's like his gear. He, hey, this is great rain delay stuff right here. Yeah, right. He thinks his gears might be out in the rain, so he's gonna have to. Coach oh him. no, really, and, coach? And, I'm yeah. sorry. No, it's all. I mean, hopefully it, they're not Nike or Fanatics or whatever, because those are gonna be see through by the time that you get out there if uh, they're getting soaking wet. I wear these black tights. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. Yeah. Hey, coach, looking forward to the ball game. Absolutely. Thank you guys for being Thank here. Thank you. Absolutely appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, man. Coach Allen, folks, he's a plethora of information. Love talking to this guy, talking baseball. He's great to talk to, man. Yeah, uh, he's one of my favorites. A um, lot of lot of good conversations that I've had over the years, getting a chance to play baseball with him. Um, good, bad, and the ugly. You spend a lot of time yeah. with guys in the dugout, man. There's conversations that happen that uh, you might not always expect, um, right. and and it's it's always been a, a respect thing. And I've I've uh, enjoyed my time getting to know Coach Allen, and I, and I love that he's given back to uh, high school baseball. Well, I think he's done a lot. You know, St. Charles West, this program has been uh, – they have they have had some good talent, um, but he has gotten the best out of that talent. And oh, out of – he's dry good. All right, he didn't <laughs> – he, he made sure to come he back and tell us. us. No, we, That's we awesome. Stuff. But he's always got the best out of his guys at the bottom of the lineup, his pitching, um, and he's had some dudes – but yet, getting but he's able to get get the production out of the, those guys that are down towards the end of the lineup too, Mitch. And you can see he knows it. He's struggling right now with that. It's a mixed bag, and uh, you know they they're working to figure it out. I, I feel like that is the, this this side of the GACs. Uh, you'll you'll see that it's like you know, you know we talk about the tops of the lineup of almost every one of these smaller schools. How, how, how good they are, competitive they are, and what can the bottom half do? And you're, you're right. And St. Charles West has been able to flip that lineup over um, because of the job that the bottom half is doing for St. Charles West. I know Coach Rue talked about they're struggling a little bit right now as a team. Um, but, again, like, you know, you, why do you guys got 20 RBIs, you know, at right. the top of the lineup? Well, it's because your bottom half is getting on and – that's why they're able to score runs. And, and, uh, but I, I've, I feel like that that's the biggest difference. You know, one through nine at the, the GAC South seems like it's a much tough, deeper, tougher, and you got three or four guys on the lineup that you can count on. Here you got five guys. <laughs> Sorry, Drew just tried to climb up there to dry off the camera and just about wiped out. Oh, no. Yeah. We're going to open this here so we can see. Hold on. Well, hopefully get it on. Well, you don't have it on camera now, but he, he – uh, One thing I want to – you know, Mitch, I was, I was thinking about this earlier today. We were talking I was, – I was going through some stuff, getting ready for uh, the ball game today. And, you know, you look at the GAC and you look at baseball in this state, whereas football and basketball are dominated and many other sports are dominated by private schools. Baseball in this state – has really been dominated by public schools. Yeah, I, or just large schools in general. I, well, I, I feel but like. But that's where most of it now in the smaller, you know, the some of the private schools in the smaller classes, I can see that and you understand that. But in this class five and six, that's unusual. Yeah, and because and, and, and we, I mean, we're big sports guys, and so we, we will talk more than just baseball, you know, when we're, right. when we're, you know, off air or on break and stuff like that. Cause obviously you're a big basketball guy. I, I'm a big football guy, but we talk sports and yeah. in high school sports in Missouri is, is pretty fun to watch. And, uh, and a lot of these kids play two sports, uh, or multiple sports. And so, um, but I agree with you for the most part. So you see, you, you know, the, the, the private schools for basketball, uh, football, uh, is dominated by the private school. Well, we're hoping to get the uh, Orchard Farm coach over here. We'll see. It, did you see the Orchard Farm coach out there? He's right outside. Yep. Bring him on. Bring him on in. You want me to? You want him to sit in the middle, or you want? No, he can just sit right there. Okay. Did he leave? No, he's right here. All right, come on in, coach. <laughs> yeah, we'll get him in here and chat him up a little bit. Where Have a seat right there. Yeah, right. microphone is microphone hot. in hand. We, we're on rain delay, so this is gr a great opportunity. Uh, we hadn't met uh, Coach Arnett before. I, I said that correct. Yeah, booty. There we go. <laughs> um, talk about your team this year so far, Coach. So uh, you know we've got a young team this year as far as uh, guys that are starting. Um, 
pretty consistently we've been going with uh, with five sophomores and a freshman. Um, you know, we've had some had some injuries to some key guys, um, especially behind the plate. Colin Simmons has been out with his with his hip surgery. Um, we're looking to get him back actually next week, so uh, we're kind of excited about that. But uh, you know, overall, we're we're learning, we're getting better. Um, we've put together some some good wins, um, but uh, we've been close in in most of our games. So it's just the difference between hey, we're just executing some of these small small plays, or uh, you know, getting the ball in play rather than striking out, and that's kind of been the difference in the game. And it's just you know a run or two here or there. The the kid that's replacing your catcher is a freshman, if I if I believe correct. Yes, he is. He's a freshman. Um, he's been hitting in the three hole for us. Uh, started him the season down like in the seven hole, eight hole, and then he's just progressively worked his way up. Um, I believe he leads our lead, our lead, our team in um, extra base base hits as well. Um, but uh, you know he's a, a bigger kid. You see him behind the plate. You know you don't you don't think he's a freshman. Um, but, uh, you know, we've actually got freshman catchers at all three levels, uh, varsity, JV, and our C team, which we were able to add this year. So that's, that's exciting for the program as well. Yeah, that's, I, I think, out of everything that you just kind of told me right there, having been able to have the depth in the program, which I, I, I have some, some people that I know that are in the Orchard Farms uh, system. I know there's a lot of transfers because the community is growing, which allows you to um, – kind of get better because now your draw is more right some of the new towns that are building up not specifically new town but just in general subdivisions that are building right are allowing for the growth for your program correct yeah it's you know there's there's just a ton of kids um and i was the jv coach there uh i didn't coach last year we had uh another kid so during the middle of baseball season i didn't think that was fair to my wife um <laughs> to, to just skip out on her for, for a little while, uh, while we had baseball season. But, uh, so I didn't coach last year, but before that I was the JV coach for the, the previous five years. Um, and, uh, you know, we didn't have near this many kids out. Um, we've got 38 in the program right now. Um, you know, we've been dressing, dressing 18, if you count Colin Simmons, for, uh, for the varsity games. Um, but like I said, we've got a few guys out, uh, varsity, JV, you know, but, Overall, we're, we're really excited about the direction of the program. Got a ton of freshmen and sophomores. Got a big eighth grade group coming. Um, you know, so we're, we're trying to, to build it right and uh, really set the foundation for years to come. This is pretty cool. And so um, do, you, do you find that uh, like veteran leadership, like typically the senior leaders, is, that, is your team led by more of a junior class as far as culture standards go? I mean, obviously, I know that you have to – uh, you know, a lot to do with that, but kind so, of players lead our programs usually. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we do have some big seniors that are, are leaders in the group. Colin is still one of those guys. Um, you know, if you were to see him at practice or even in games, he'll be talking to guys and, and trying to help coach guys up. Um, Caden Tipton's another one. Uh, while he hasn't started every game, um, he's been a leader for us as far as just being a guy that's going to step up and try to do things the right way. Um, we don't have a ton of juniors in the program. That's kind of been a, a, a class that's been smaller. Uh, we do have two guys that, uh, that moved into the district, um, and uh, Braden Cummer and uh, Bryce Daniel, that, that have helped out a lot. Um, Braden's been been big for us on the mound and then Bryce has played played shortstop so yeah I, I know. good additions there's a lot of there's actually a lot of orchard farm folks that I I went to school with Braden's or I live next door to Braden's mom okay uh, <laughs> and uh, Daniel uh, used to work out at the facility at the hitting zone and yeah. so I know the Daniel family pretty well and uh, that's what I like about some of this GAC stuff so I know a lot of people because right. I, I we train out this way so um, I guess they're getting ready to get started uh, so Coach, I appreciate you, you yeah. coming in, chatting with us, and, and getting a chance to meet you. It's uh, nice to meet you guys, too. Yeah, because I, I, this is my first time, um, and I've heard a lot of good things about you. Uh, so good luck today. Stay healthy, and um, well, I guess we'll see you in about an hour. Thanks. Sounds, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we, we. Yeah. yeah, Coach, he, he sent the – we'll get – he sent his uh, to us already. Okay. I think it was an email. Copy, Do you need another copy?
Coach is right here asking. We're getting ready to start out here. You can switch seats, Mitch. Well, I wanted to read this quote. Did you read this quote yet? I thought this was a good one. Uh, no. <laughs> well, I thought it was a good one. Do you know? It, it says, "In the game of life, I trust I trust God's playbook to guide me towards success and fulfillment." There you go. I really like that. I, I like, like that, that a lot. Somebody put that there. Yeah, that's, and it's that's it's right. been there for a while. We're, we're switching chairs, folks. I got you a warm seat there, buddy. <laughs> I'm okay with that. We got a still light sprinkle out here uh, on the field, Mitch. That was fun. Hey, I love the coaches coming by at the right time. Yeah, right? Right? Uh, uh, I think this stuff is pretty neat, though. Like, the, the GAC Classic, um, you know, we have the, the North, Central, and South Divisions. And so I'm super excited about this. And it's just a, a great atmosphere in general. So here we go. Creech comes back out after that delay, I guess, you know. Um, two outs. We got number seven. I thought we were, yeah, because that was a walk. One and pitch, one out. And that is one pitch, one out, and he's down. <clears throat> so that was the third out. And uh, so we're going to the top of the sixth inning, score 8-1, <laughs> Winfield. Welcome back, folks. Digital marketing is about cultivating a brand-conscious customer or consumer. However, you cannot cultivate this mindset or relationship without being conscious of your own brand or how someone relates to it. Training, support, and development have allowed us to be the right digital marketing team for your micro business. Contact Red Earth Productions at 636-400-3199, located in O'Fallon, Missouri. Well, thank you to both coaches from Orchard Farm and from St. Charles West stopping in to say hi and, and giving us some fun feedback. Um, pretty, I, I, uh, this is the first time I met Orchard Farms coach. Uh, pretty nice guy. And coach Ornette, yeah. Yep, and some of the guys that I talked to uh, from Orchard Farm are really excited about um, him and, and, and how he's leading this, this program. And he, and he had talked about a lot of people moving in. I, I think – from the, the few guys that I talked to and the few parents of that organization, I think there's like four or five kids that are new to this year. And uh, I think Orchard Farm's one of the few schools that are moving up uh, in classes, I believe. Absolutely. And uh, if they go to class five, that'll be interesting. You know, that's a tough break too because you, you get a, you finally turn around a year and then you gotta you gotta move. You get you go you get re well not reseated but. Um, redistrict redistrict yeah reclass reclass thank you redistrict that's a how about this it's, since we got just a second what do you think about reclassifying athletes how do you mean uh so like let's say you are a junior currently and you get held back and you 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 have two junior years for sports for sports only specifically yeah I don't know, man. That's 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 too much to get into right here. <laughs> okay. Creech at the plate takes ball one. Chime in, folks, if you're out there and you uh, have your own opinion. We can have that on for a podcast. Absolutely. Let us know if it's a conversation you'd like to hear. I, I think it's an interesting topic, Mitch. But, uh, yeah. Uh, here's more one. That, that wet ball is going to be tough at this point, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking about the feet. The one thing about turf is, is you love it because you can – obviously, how, how quick was the turnaround? Yeah. But, it's, but again, it's wet. And so some of these kids are playing on just tennis shoes. Yeah. Uh, you hope – and that's the thing. Bases, you know, if you got a towel, wipe it off. Um, I, try, and, uh, try and keep yourself, you know, as, as safe as possible. That's ball four. I can't, I can't wait to watch the first slide. You're going you're gonna to have to slide if it If he about, goes, yeah. he might end up in left field yeah. over there, man. Start your slide at about 77 feet. <laughs> For those that don't know, our, base, our bases are 90 feet apart. <laughs> exactly. Some people don't know that, believe it or not, Brian. Caden Palmer. <laughs> hits that ball foul. 
I love the fact that there isn't hardly a lot of wind, Mitch. Uh, yeah, as far as a guy that has a ton of allergies, I love this rain and, and knocked it down and no more wind. I'm tired of having uh, that yellow and green stuff in my eyeballs. And that ball is up. That's uh, I could do without Palin. One ball, one strike. I know we need it. I like honey. I like Missouri honey specifically. Keeps, Way goes. Keeps my allergies down. Oh, I thought he was stealing. 2-1. So what this will probably facilitate is a really is a, probably a much quicker turnaround trying to keep this on uh, schedule. On schedule. Yep. And that ball is away from the catcher. I like what Creech did there. You know, I always talk about it every time when a runner takes off, man, always look in. So a little little conversation here about uh, some uh, players of the game, Mitch. We're getting to that point. Tell me what you think. I, you know me. I'm always, I'm always one to just kind of lean one side, which is, you know, usually that winning side. But uh, the young man on the bump, I think, has done a nice job, Absolutely. offensively and or in on the bump. And he came back after the rain delay and threw one pitch, got one out. So for me, it's the starting pitcher for Winfield. Um, we'll have to talk about the uh, POG for uh, St. Charles. I agree. Morse has he's he's three for four, but I think Creech has been the story of this game. Uh, got you know he had a little trouble here or there, but for the most part he's been dialed in. Oh, look at that jump. That's a great opportunity. The catcher just bobbled and dropped the ball. Creech is looking in. He had stopped and saw that and took the bag. That's great base running. I love that. Yeah, as a, as a coach, you just tell them and say, hey, you, you know, commit to something. Um, you know, don't get caught in between because a coach, you just, you just don't like to see that. And just go. It was a strike on Corehammer. It was a pretty pitch. So two runners in scoring position, and that's a ball in. So one ball, one strike now. You know, there was a part of me that, that was hoping that when we had that lightning and thunder mm -hmm. that he was up to plate. Would that have not just been perfect? It would have been pretty good if he swings the bat and the lightning goes boom as long as he didn't get yeah, of course. destroyed by it. You know, yeah, but that would have been killer. Ooh. Good choice of words, you know, here, maybe. Here's bad the <laughs> bad choice, probably. <laughs> here's the scenario we were talking about with Coach Allen right here. Corehammer takes a ball low, two and two, right here, Mitch. You got uh, you're the visiting team. If you can, if you can get three runs here, and Creech goes out and sits him down, you save an inning on your pitching. Yeah, and then I, you know, I didn't think about those things. Um, you know, on, on, on this side of it, I didn't think about it. You know, it's like, hey, I could save him in any, and that any may not matter like today, but it does when you're talking three more starts down the road. So instead of throwing 35 innings, he may have only 32 innings, so he can get you three more, you know, whatever. Oh, that's a nice <laughs> job by the catcher there, not letting that <laughs> ball get. Uh, I, I, I don't sure. know if that was Thor-like, but <laughs> it wasn't. It might have been when it. It might have been the start of the second movie when he was sitting in the couch drinking adult beverages and oh, was yeah, a little yeah. overweight. Yeah, yeah. Three and two now. I hope to you get, hammer. I hope the sound caught that. I do too. Lined at the second baseman. Nice Good job. Play. Looks Creech back. That is a heck of a play. Good play by the second baseman, Mason Hickerson. Yeah, and that I thought, ball was a hot smash. Yeah, and I and I think he's done a pretty nice job over there. I know that uh, the you know when the first inning, I think there was an opportunity to double play that he kind of bought, you know didn't have a great throw on it, but since then he's showed the ability to have a good glove and and uh, that second double play that they bobbled at first. It's a pretty nice flip. Absolutely, we got time called. Alex Kenny tripled in the first inning. He's one for three. And hammers one into left field for an RBI single. 
And it is 9-1 Warriors. So one pitch brings up Luke Pruitt, who is one for three today. A strikeout, a single. First and third, one out. Winfield trying to tack on a few more here, Mitch. Popped foul back out of play. Strike one. Both these pitchers for you know for Winfield and St. Charles, um, after the rain delay, it's about 30, 35, 40 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Come right back out and said, hey, I want to finish it. Kenny taking the bag. It, it's it's uh, I always find this we, we talked about it with Coach Rue on the show about baseball kind of um, the full circle things. And here we are just it, explaining the first and third situation up by eight runs. Game seem feels in hand. And you know, they take that bag there to avoid the force out. Right. And and it's and those are those are learning opportunities. I know I gave Coach Nuru an, uh, a hard time about it on air, you know. But here again, you, when you think about it differently, two and two, now to Pruitt. But it's it's those small things. It, it is. And when you're trying to, you know, and you can always see, especially after rain delay, you know, the Pirates have been down big in this game, but the energy is a little different, right? Temperature cooled down. Yeah, Curveball stays out. That's it, a tough take right there. I think I, too. I still think it's warmer than it was last year at the GHC Classics. Oh, the one game yes we did last year, I think it we had to cold. try to have the windows closed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was, bro. To sneak it's peaks. been warmer except for the one game. Ooh. Just missed him. Base on balls there. And the bases are loaded with Warriors. Yeah, I don't I, – we've had the one – out at, uh, of course, we tried over I was at say Liberty. Liberty was the one that. Uh, but overall, we've been nastiness. pretty good this year, Mitch. Yeah, you, uh, you know, better be lucky than good kind of feel. Weather's been better this year. Yeah, we overall, weather's been better. The way you said it, it was like a wordplay. I felt like you were Eminem on the microphone. I thought you rhymed it well. I know you don't like Eminem. I'm sure. Uh, call me T Bone. Never heard of T-Bone? Mm -mm. Little West Coast Christian rap? No. Okay, there you go. I mean, I... We have a... I eat them. We're going gonna, to <laughs> <we're gonna> get a... <laughs> oh, you got to check out Dippin', man. Oh, it's a, it's a good song, Dippin'. A Few Good Men. Oh, yeah. Few, I can see it now. Yeah, there they are. They're There's people now. There's we got to no A Few Good Men. Oh, yeah, baby. That's that's. I showed you that one before. No, I don't I don't think oh, so. Because yeah, yeah. I usually you liked it because he brought in some uh, some uh, uh, rappers from the other side in on him. You, I'll play for you. You'll, you'll remember once you hear it. All right. A little old school you know, West Coast rap. You know, I'm hip. Ish. <laughs> Oh, pitching change. Number 10 coming in here, Mitch. Who we got on the pitching change? Number 10 for St. Charles Wyatt. I'm going to go Savory. Uh, that's how it spells. That's what it looks like. Okay. Um, Wyatt uh, has got uh, has appeared in three games. got a one and two-thirds. Um, he's given up four runs, eight earned. Uh, or eight, uh, four earned, eight runs total. Um, but he's come in and competed uh, for this group, and um, so he's going to have to come out pump strikes if he wants to get his team through it and try to play another inning. Absolutely. Thank you, Rick. 27. Rick Hawkins out there behind the plate today. He's, uh, he's a good one. I did a um, umpire clinic with Rick back, uh, I think, man, it's been 2015, I think, or 2016. Um, and uh, down in uh, Mid America camp with those uh, uh, Jason Blackburn and those guys, it's a good camp. It's a lot of fun. You learn a lot. Um, 
if you're interested in umpiring, and even if you you know if you think, oh man, I want to hear it. Listen, most parents, most people are pretty good. Uh, it's a few people that get after you, and you ignore those people anyway. And that's what I do because I don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's it's fun to be out there, the kids. Uh, it's great work, you know. Um, and you can earn some cash. You can earn some extra cash on the side. Extra cash is good. I think so. Do you have a signature strike three call? I used to, and they told me to change it at the clinic. So What was it? I'm a big ripcord guy. Huh? I'm a big ripcord guy. Throw it up and rip it. Yeah, I would I would come up like I said, no, you got to change it. So my stance was I'd come up and call like this. So I'd just come up and just... Hit him with an uppercut? Like I, a, that's what I used to do. Like a Mike they, Tyson uppercut? They told me that or like was a, cool, I thought. But uh, they told me it wasn't a very professional. So I changed it. What's not professional about it? I don't know. I think saying strike threes. <laughs> so I just rock <laughs> back and, and pull the chain is basically what I pull did the chain. there, Mitch. So is that what it's actually called is pull the chain and not the ripcord? That's what I called it. I don't know. I always thought it was the ripcord. I like, thought it was always rip. Yeah, you know, as an part. umpire, I used to think it was always funny. I, I would have never done it in a game, but I always, always thought about it. And that ball is flied into center field under it. Is McCullen for out number one. And the run is going to score. Nice sack fly. And Palmer scores from third. And we got first and second with one out. Make sure you're hustling. Make sure you're hustling there. I don't think he was running too hard. If I, if you know what, I'll be honest with you. If I'm, if I'm the defensive team and I'm down like this, I'm probably let just letting it go. No. Yeah. Well, you gotta compete. Gotta compete. No. When I say let it go, I meant try to get the out at home, not oh, cut it. Oh, oh, oh! I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I just and and he was he wasn't running too hard. Like he might have had a bounce that could have helped. Him. Of course, Sturf could have bounced over his head. But Brendan Howard at the plate, it's two outs. It's off the plate. One and one. Giving some advice from the dugout there. Did you catch that? If it, yeah, it was from a player, though, so I did chalk that up as a... Ground ball, backhanded by the shortstop, a long yes, throw. Sir. Oh, what a play by the shortstop there. Colton Hodler. That's a big-time throw, Mitch. Oh, everything about that, the slide, the turf, the use it. Wow. Throw. I like it. We're going to the bottom of the sixth inning. Score 10 1, Warriors. Who has time to create a video or digital marketing plan when you are busy running your micro or small business? Time is precious, and what we offer as a video production and digital marketing company is our service, studio, and creative skill. Identify your brand on any platform with video. Contact Red Earth Productions at 636-400-3199, located in O'Fallon, Missouri. What a nice play there to finish the inning for St. Charles to get out of that jam to survive another inning of play uh, and hopefully scratch a few runs. That's what you like to see is them come out and, and uh, you compete. Uh, that play that that shortstop made reminded me of the play that Bobby Witt Jr., from the Kansas City Royals made. If you don't know who that young man is, he is a fun shortstop to watch. So go look him up. He's all over YouTube, I'm sure, making plays like that. Just a slide in the, like in that five, six gap to come up and use that slide and stuck that foot in the dirt to throw across. It was a heck of a play, and it kind of reminded me of that young man's play. We got a full week this week, Mitch. We're going to be here all day today. We got game number two coming up, St. Charles West uh, versus Orchard Farm Eagles. We got uh, the United Cap Warrington taking on North Point. I'm looking forward to that one. I'm it's excited be, about yeah, that one. Yeah, I really am. And uh, then tomorrow, popped up Myers, foul territory. Creech calls him. Everybody off and comes over and makes the play. Yeah, Looks like he's the only one that wanted to get there. Uh, 
Well, I don't I don't like too much of the too much talk going on, but Creech got over there next to the dugout and St. Charles dugout started barking at him and uh, Creech looked at him, said something smart and I was like, "Okay, young man, they'll go ahead and give it to him. They shouldn't do that." I don't like that part of the game. Out no, I really I don't. don't. You know, let's let's that's where sportsmanship should that's what sportsmanship is right there. You know, you you're on the field, you've got to stop the other team from scoring. What we were talking about earlier with Coach Allen, that's not sportsmanship on either side. We shouldn't be barking at each other like that. Root for your team, give, you know. But hey, you know, if you're making millions of dollars and you think you need to mouth off at somebody, that's you know, that's a grown man stuff. Uh, MLB's no, entertainment. Nobody here has made that that far yet. Not yet. Most likely will not. Ground ball. It's going to be foul. That had been a tough play. <laughs> 0 and 2 to Nate Mosley. Felt like I might have had a chance to beat that one out. It's a high hopper. <laughs> oh, that's the old turf bounce. Boing. <laughs> Tomorrow, we're coming back for the Central. Same start time, 2 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, ball one. Leading off with, uh, I'll get that. I can't remember off the top of my head. I know it's somebody. We'll be playing tomorrow. <laughs> there is a game. <laughs> Ground ball in the hole. Oh, Kenny another one. on Let's one go. knee makes the throw. Man. Nice play. Two in a row, Mitch. Man, I, I, it's a, you know, Jeter made that, that play where the, the jump throw was famous. That, to me, is like more routine. I love that little slide. Dig that foot in the ground and throw it. Love that play. I'm pulling this up for you, Mitch. I got it right here. Oh, tomorrow we have starting at 2 o'clock. Tomorrow starting at 2 o'clock we have Fort Zumwalt North versus Fort Zumwalt South. At 4.30 is Liberty versus Washington. And at 7 o'clock, the nightcap, Zumwalt East takes on uh, Holt. So tomorrow, tune in or come down to the ballpark. Two balls and one strike now to Hayden Schneider. Tomorrow is supposed to be another nice, cool day. No rain, strike two. Right, Mitch? Yeah. It's going to be a dandy. 80 and sunny tomorrow, so... Come on out, because uh, Thursday looks like another rain day. So, yeah, uh, well, I'll be interested in no what. Baseball there. Yeah, but uh, you know, some of the teams that were maybe playing now might have this rain might have uh, cut that game short. True. So they may have to play on Thursday. Uh, you know, and then Friday night, Mitch, strike three, looking Schneider goes down for out number three. That's what I don't like right there. You're up big. Have some class. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it always is funny to me because what will happen is they're going to be down sometime when they're down by 10 runs, and they're not going to like it. And I'm not trying to be – I just want us to, to talk about – sometimes we talk about these things. We understand, hey, be up for your team. We talk about sportsmanship. I, if, you, if you beat these guys 10 to 1, 11 to 1, 12 to 1, that's fine. That's the game. But it's the other stuff when you're, you know, in those scenarios – you know, that that we if we can just keep those things down. He struck out looking. Don't give him an extra, you know. He already <laughs> Yeah, you, you can you can be happy for your guy. Yeah. Uh, hey, and it's good to do it. Yeah, that's good. Let's go, yeah. preach. Be I'm okay with that. Be happy for your guy. Say the things that it's happy for your guy, but don't don't the the thing the the sword thing, the uh you know, that, that thing drives me bonkers. Uh, most of these guys don't even know what the sword came from and even why why it gets said. And it's just, it, it just like they see something on a 10-second clip and they think that's what everybody does. You know, we got Corey Graff dances at second base. When you're down yeah. 15 runs, I, it stuff just irks me. And, I, and I'm, I'm part of that old school generation, though, you know, the, the, of play. Yeah. You know, where you used to be able to slide past second base back and take somebody out. You know, now if you blow on them the wrong way, you know, everybody's out kind of thing in, <laughs> in all of our sports. So 
I know I we didn't a take era. a break here, but I wanted to Friday Night Lights this week. We got a good one. I'm excited. Rockwood Summit taking on Parkway Central. That's at Baldwin. We'll have that for you here on Youth Baseball Midwest. I'm looking forward to that one. I always like I always like the Friday Night Light events. And that ball is outside. Ball one to Timmy Emmons, who came in for Cooper Martin. Yeah, and then Saturday we're going to be out at uh, Game 7. We'll be out of Warrington all day Saturday talking, chatting, highlights, interviews. Sunday, 14U championship game. Man, it's a big week of baseball for Youth Baseball Midwest, Mitch. I was going to say it is for Youth Baseball Midwest. I won't see you on the weekend. Yeah, he's a slacker, folks. Uh, it's, tur it's, tur <laughs> it's turkey season. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You. Heads up. Oh. He ain't slacking. He's going to be in the woods. Yes, sir. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> I will try to get us some turkey nuggets. There you go. You ever had fried turkey nuggets? I have not. Okay. I saw a turkey on the side of the road yesterday, though. Uh, alive or? That ball is lined into center field for a, one, uh, for a base hit, leading off the inning here. Yesterday was opening day. Okay, that's why the turkey was standing by the road, man. Yeah, he's smart enough; he don't want to get got shot. Got out of the woods. <laughs> did it have a beard on him? Was it a was it a Tom or do you know? Did it have a beard? Something sticking out of I his chest. I was going sixty miles an hour. I just saw it was a turkey. Speed limit seventy, Brian. No, not not on that road. I was doing the speed limit, bro. Colin <laughs> Morris. <laughs> <laughs> just over the outstretched hands of Hickerson for <laughs> for Morse's fourth hit of the day. He is <laughs> four for five. Scored two runs. That's a pretty good day at the plate there, Mitch. Yeah, it's going to help the numbers. Creech now. He has singled, walked twice, scored three times. And pitched a dandy of a game. Pitched a dandy. You know, I keep forgetting to bring out my little clicker Strike so I can see where the pitch counts are, see how much more he's going to go out, if he's going to get out in the seventh inning. Takes the uh, fastball on the thigh. The HBP. What? I did. Had you just noticed? I was wondering if everybody noticed. You see that? You know what? You know why I brought this pin, don't you? I was gonna keep score as well. I wanted to feel like Brad Thompson. Brad. <laughs> you know, Brad Thompson keeps score, and I really like watching Brad Thompson yeah, on TV. Yeah, he's I really fun. Do. I, I really, I, I love that combination. He's a great commentator. I like it. And Base I, is loaded. No outs. And you got Caden Palmer back up, who has walked three times and grounded out to the second baseman, scored twice. Ball one. Ground ball. Third baseman comes home. Oh, Talk and he it. sails it. It looked like he had a little trouble getting it out of the glove, Mitch, and didn't settle himself before he threw the baseball. I think you talked about it earlier with the baseball being a little bit wet. Kind of the you can see him wiping his hands off, frustrated. So the error on the third baseman run scores, and the bases are still loaded. No outs. Eleven one. That's tough. And that's where, you know, young players, guys, you know, learn. Settle, settle yourself. You had time. Settle yourself. Make a good throw. Ball is outside. Ball one. And he's, and he's, and he's had a uh, good day over there at third base, too. Swing and a miss. Strike one. This is where you see, like, for St. Charles, this young man has had a few opportunities to pitch, and, he, and he's given up some runs, but 
a lot of them have been unearned. There you go. Half at least, right? Yeah. And so it, you, you can you know, see maybe the whys. Two balls and one strike to number 14 hitting for Corehammer. Who we got there, Mitch, number 14? Uh, for Winfield, I got uh, Grant Seidel. Yes, he is. Uh, he's the young man playing. He's coach just because uh, he was DH four, so coach is just letting him swing for himself here, and he's got a three-two count. Yeah, he doesn't hit. I think he's got an at bat on the season. So I don't have much on him. <laughs> I know his number, and he wears New Balances. He's been playing, swinging a miss, strike three. He's been playing left field, and he goes down swinging for the first out of the inning. Alex Kenny, the shortstop, has uh, a triple, a single, and a couple of RBIs here in today's ballgame. And a hard smash through the hole and a throw in up the line and away and oh it didn't go in the dugout but everybody advances there you go let it go right mitch uh, yeah take a shot take a shot know where you're at arm wise it's all of it I, I i know that in these moments um you, you know teams get frustrated maybe parents get frustrated but we need these reps they matter even though you're down uh this is an opportunity that if you know, they could they could ruin some one day by throwing somebody out at the plate to end a game in districts. You know what I mean? Upsetting somebody. Exactly. Throw it. Show us what you got. Ground ball. Coach nope. can't quite get to that one. Coach feeling good over there. You still got them young them young that young blood over there. I'd have never moved. Prove it. Grounds foul, strike one. One out. Thirteen one ball game here. Top of the seventh inning. And change up, hit foul. You got so, two down oh, there two. now. A couple of baseballs. Oh, oh hey, nice, there's nice the boy Pele. <laughs> Thor hammer on his way down to get the baseball. So, oh. Everybody back. Don't do that. Hopefully it was at his own guy. Two balls and one strike. Or excuse me, one ball and two strikes now. Ooh. Swing and a miss. Oh Strike three. So a couple of Ks in the inning here for Wyatt Savory. Thank you. You got it. I didn't write it down, Mitch. There it is. Now I got it. It's a, a based on stats from uh, from the high school sports on STL today. That was his. That's his first two strikeouts of the year. Nice job for this young man. Yeah, he's a 2025, so he's a junior for St. Charles. He's getting some experience for his senior year. Two outs. Camden Palmer. Two and two. Excuse me. Two and zero. Oh. Got lost in it there for a minute, Mitch. <laughs> That's what those rain delays will do. Uh, the other night, he, he was on ESPN Radio, and I, I was driving out, and it, 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 I think it was the Padres-Dodgers game maybe. Mm -hmm. and it was on oh, late, Sunday night? Yeah. something like that. <clears throat> and I was driving out, and I actually, I think I went to bed at like 2 o'clock in the morning, something ridiculous. The game was still on <laughs> from the rain delay. And I'm like, oh, man. Oh, yeah, because they didn't, they didn't start. It, it was an hour before, I think 45 minutes before the game started because I was watching it. Hey, I told you, you know, Mitch and I, we talk about the Dodgers, and I was, and he said, man, they're going to win. Everybody's been talking about that. I'm like, 
they have so many injuries. A ground ball back up the middle, shortstop at it. Can't pick it, low throw, and another run scores. So, Palmer, Caden Palmer scores from third, first and third on the air. And we got a 14-1 ball game. But what I was, I don't think the Dodgers maybe win 100 games. Their, their pitching is, is not good right now. They got a lot of injuries, dude. <laughs> They're going to win 140 is what I told you. Yeah. I sent them a text that said Dodgers are going to win 140 games this year. I do agree with you, though. They're struggling. And, you know, Texas the same way. Like, Texas has, like, DeGrom, Max Scherzer on the shelf. And you guys have three big arms on the, on the shelf. Exactly. Ball is lined into left field for an RBI single by Howard. Kenny scores from third, first and second now. And Timmy Emmons back up to plate. 15 to 1 here. Ball up. Off the end of the bat, it's going to be a tough play for Hickerson. Comes up, makes a nice throw for the final out. But uh, Winfield adds more. It's 15-1. to one. We're going to the bottom of the seventh inning. Warriors ahead. REP has a full marketing team focused on the micro business owner and entrepreneur. Digital marketing at a professional level should be accessible and affordable to the micro business community. Our team is here to provide that for your business. Contact Red Earth Productions at 636-400-3199, located out of O'Fallon, Missouri. As we wrap this one up, I'm uh, starting to get a little bit more excited about the uh, Orchard Farm St. Charles West game. Uh, talking with Nuru in the rain delay, um, he, had, he had said that uh, Orchard Farm got him twice last year. Orchard Farm had two wins in conference play, and it was against St. Charles West last year. So, uh, And they're, they're, they're riding on a little different confidence this year, so St. Charles West has to come prepared. Orchard Farms had some good wins this year already, too. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see. And, and we, you know, they're a class four. I know the district they're in last year, Orchard Farm won their district. Now, it wasn't the, you know, Winfield St. Charles West district. But still, I don't care. Win your district, that's good. And so you're coming back. You got some dudes. Your guy, yeah, Titus Fisher, yep. playing well. Pitching well. I'm not sure that he uh, his offensive stats, but I mean he's getting opportunities. He's a sophomore. Oh, I got to give him to you. I have yeah, I got him. Here. You got, got him? him. Yeah. Okay. Of course, I pay attention. He's one of my guys. <laughs> I, there you I, go. I mean, I just don't train him for the whole winter, you know, and then send him off without paying attention. Foul tipped into the glove. Strike one to Curtis Harris, the DH. He has reached on an error. And struck out, reached on the air there. So he's reached base on two airs. He's got 0-2, uh, oh ground ball, big hop, the old turf hop. To the first baseman, Howard for out number one. So are you like a cherry hop kind of guy or are you a Sunday hop kind of guy? The ah, same, it's you know, the same I would say thing, Sunday hop. Yeah. Because I don't know what a cherry hop is. <laughs> Same. It's like a cherry on top kind of thing. I don't know. Good hop. Reed, 
Creech is just kind of reaching back here and firing fastballs. Creech is reach in. No, that was bad. That was terrible. I apologize. Two and one. <laughs> that was hey, we're, that was really bad. We're almost out of stuff here to say, Mitch. <laughs> yeah, but I could have been better than that at least. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Maybe we'll have a whole new audience for the next game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some of the same. We appreciate you joining us, folks, for some afternoon baseball, high school baseball, and a five-pitch walk. For the pitcher, Wyatt Savory. Absolutely. Got to love it, right? You know, it's a, I got to thinking about just... Uh, Number four, the shortstop, Colton Hald, uh, Hadler, Haldler, excuse me. You know, my uniforms that I wear and I'm watching... Get there. Fouled out of play. I'm watching Wyatt's jersey as he jogged down to first base, just kind of bounce all over, you know, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, that jersey a little too big on him. I was like, I don't think I've ever worn a jersey that was ever too big. Pretty sure every jersey I had was probably a little too small. The polyester ones from the 90s. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, though. Was it, was it stretching a bit, bro? Uh, <laughs> man, I had, to, one. I had to cut it. Although I, I will tell you, you know, my mother the other day, as a swing and a miss, she tells me, uh, she saw me, she said, I was watching you Saturday. And you're sitting there, and she says, you need to lose a little around the middle. <laughs> Let's go. That's what I like about like like uh, our, swinging a miss, strike three. The older folks in our lives, you know, and then the younger folks, they don't seem to lie. Uh, no, you know, and it's like they tell the truth, regardless of how sometimes brutal it can be. I will tell you, it looks like uh, this is going to be a one one run game here. Creech firing fastballs and McCullen. Strike one. He's wanting to finish this one out, Mitch. He's, so who we got for the Pirates over here? Creech. <laughs> I like uh, I like Schneider who come in, and that is going to what a play. be That's caught a nice boy. by the center fielder out there. Wow, nice play. From – that wasn't – I think that was uh, – yeah, that was Morse out there playing center field to finish out this game. We're going to get uh, some uh, interviews, and we'll have them out on our social media here. But we're going to sign off for this game and get our guys up here, get some interviews for from our players of the game. So make sure you're following us on social media on Twitter, Twitter X. You can find us at capitals, YBM, underscore, lowercase cast, Facebook and Instagram at Youth Baseball Midwest. Folks, join us here in about uh, 30 minutes if you want to watch. We'll have the second game of our triple header, St. Charles West versus the Orchard Farm Eagles. For now, we'll see you in a few.